and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. But they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. As we continue to analyze dreams and visions, Israelites, it's important that you don't become consumed with your dreams and visions. Sometimes the Satans give you false dreams and visions to waste your time and energy. When you wake up from your sleep, make sure to rebuke an evil dream and to accept every good covenant the Most High made with you and go about your life. Don't spend your day trying to figure out what a dream is revealing to you. Simply ask the Father for the interpretation. Do your part on repenting, praising the Father, canceling evil dreams, and leaving the rest in the Father's hands. The scripture said to cast your cares on the Father because he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The reason you don't want to consume yourself with trying to interpret your dreams, only the Most High can interpret your dreams. If the Father doesn't give you the meaning right away, be patient and wait on the Most High to reveal the meaning to you. When you try to figure out what a dream means, this could lead to frustration. In addition, a distraction from what is happening in your life. Israelites, make it a habit to cast all your cares on the Father and allow the Father to direct your path. The Most High will put the right person in your path to reveal truth to you. Trust the Most High. Behind the scenes, the Most High has his angels encamp around the righteous, ready to deliver the righteous from the snares of the Satans. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. As long as you're living a life that pleases the Most High, as well as doing your part in repenting daily and canceling evil covenants, behind the scenes, the holy angels are fighting on your behalf. Learning to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm will help you connect with the Father as well as increase your wisdom on what spirit or dark power is attacking you. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, we must know what we're wrestling with. The spirit realm will reveal your enemy to you. Israelites, it never hurt to increase your knowledge. The scripture said a lot of people perish for a lack of knowledge. As your knowledge increase in the awakening, give the Most High room to do the necessary work in you. Don't get in the Most High's way by trying to accomplish only what the Most High can make happen. Humble yourself. Give the Most High space to transform you by renewing your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Israelites, it's important to respect the Most High's timing. It's wise to keep your life balanced. When the truth of the Most High's words begin to sanctify you, use the wisdom gained to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Your newly found wisdom is not meant to make you become prideful, nor are you to use the truth of the Most High's words for evil. Remember, it's the Most High that does the good work in us. Last week, we began to learn how to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. So far, you learned that the language of the spirit realm are symbols. You learned that most of your dreams are not literal because the symbols in the spirit realm doesn't have the same meaning with the language of the physical realm. Everything you see in the spirit realm matters. That is why you're in the best position to decode the symbols you see. Leaving anything out could lead to a false interpretation of the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Israelites, before we begin to look into our ancestors' dreams in the scriptures to help decode the symbols you see, it's important that you understand the reason the Most High allow you to see into the spirit realm. The main reason the Most High allow you to see into the spirit realm, 
to level the battlefield in spiritual warfare. When an evil covenant is established, most people are unaware of the evil covenants because of a lack of knowledge about the spirit realm. The Most High allow his people to see, to warn of danger, or to give you instructions. The scripture said to us in the book of Job that the Most High come to speak with us in a dream and to give us instructions. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people mistake the instructions and warnings given to them in the spirit realm for end time prophecies, especially dreams about destruction. Israelites, the Most High allow you to see what is happening to your spirit behind the scenes. The Most High show you to warn you of the traps, the Satans and the workers of iniquity set for you. The Most High also use your dream life to give you instructions. Majority of the scriptures in the Bible are dreams and visions our ancestors had. When the Most High transferred the everlasting covenant to our father Jacob, the Most High established the covenant in the spirit realm. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. The Most High did not show up in the physical realm to tell Jacob that he will give him the land of Canaan for a possession. The Most High did not send a person in the physical realm to have Jacob sign documents giving him possession of the land of Canaan. In the spirit realm, the Most High told Jacob of his plans. Jacob had to decide to accept the covenant or reject the covenant. Jacob accepted the covenant and the scriptures revealed that when Jacob awake from his sleep, he built an altar and made a vow. Jacob said if the Most High will be with him and watch over him, as well as provide for him, the Most High will be his God. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. There is not a deed on record that claimed the Most High, the God of Israel, gave Jacob our father the land of Canaan for a possession. This covenant was established in the spirit realm and sealed by the words the Most High spoke to Jacob in the spirit realm. The scripture said the word of the Most High will not return to him void. A lot of you have dreams and visions of the Most High giving you instructions about your life. The only confirmation you have is the word of the Most High and the promises he made to you in the spirit realm. Just like our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only had the word of the Most High to confirm the everlasting covenant. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people allow the heathens laws and religion dictate how they serve the most high. If they can't find confirmation in the scriptures, they don't believe. 
I am sure the Canaanites did not believe the Israelites when they came to take possession of the promised land. Regardless if the Canaanites believed the Most High gave the Israelites their land for a possession, the Israelites inherited the promised land and they dwell in the land until the Most High removed them from his presence because of the sin of idolatry. The Most High used the spirit realm to answer your prayers, give you insight about your life and the lives of the people around you, as well as to give you instructions of what he wants to do for you and through you. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Israelites, your dreams reveal sensitive information about you. If the Most High wants to use you to do something significant and he revealed this to you and you go bragging about it to the world, the workers of iniquity will hate you. Let the life of Joseph be an example unto why you should keep your dreams and visions private. Joseph's brothers hated him for his dreams. The Most High revealed to Joseph early in his life of his destiny. Because of the glorious calling Joseph had of ruling over his brothers, his own family despised him for the great calling on his life. Israelites, if his own family despised him for his dreams, what do you believe the workers of iniquity that have a perpetual hatred for you will do to you for your dreams and visions? And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Keep your mouth shut about what the Most High is revealing to you in the spirit realm. When you know how to decode the symbols in the spirit realm, you will understand how the Most High communicate with you. A lot of the answers to your prayers were answered in the spirit realm. Because many of you don't know anything about the spirit realm, you believe the Most High is not answering your prayers. Remember, your journey with the Most High is spiritual, not religious. In addition, your journey is a personal relationship that is unique to you. To find the Most High, you have to go in the Spirit. Remember, the Most High is Spirit. That is why the Word of the Most High said, walk in the Spirit. In addition, the Word of the Most High said, the Father desire for His people to worship Him in the Spirit and in truth. The Scripture said, the Kingdom of the Most High is within you. You must look within. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the Kingdom of God is within you. Israelites, when you know the voice of the Most High, decoding the symbols you see in the spirit realm becomes easier. The Most High transferred the everlasting covenant to Jacob our father in the spirit realm. The reason a lot of people don't know their calling or what the Most High is preparing them for, they refuse to go deeper with the Father. Most people don't go past Jesus, the idol God of the heathens. Majority of Israelites journey end with Jesus. When the principalities and dark powers attack them, they have no clue because they don't go past Jesus. Israelites, majority of what you see in the spirit realm is speaking about your life or the life of the people that are close to you. For example, if the spirit of poverty is attacking your cousin, your cousin have no knowledge about the spirit of poverty. You who have knowledge about the spirit realm, the Most High can show you what is happening with your cousin for you to pray for your cousin as well as to help your cousin overcome the spirit of poverty. Israelites, that is how the Most High use you to help each other. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Religion made many of you believe because you had a vision, you're a prophet called by the Most High to share your dreams with the world. Israelites, that is manipulation. The workers of iniquity are trying to find out the condition of your spirit. If your spirit is malnourished, they will bound you spiritually. Your journey with the Father is a personal relationship. Religion tried to make your spiritual journey a one-size-fits-all. 
Making everyone have one faith and one God is easier to control the world. That is why the new world order is working towards one government, one faith, and one God. There is nothing new under the sun. Israelites, if you take the time to get to know the Father for yourself by establishing a personal relationship, I guarantee you will see a transformation in your life. Not only will your life improve, you will begin to see the world in a different light. When the Most High open your spiritual eyes, everything will begin to make sense. The reason so many people are struggling, the God of this world has blind their spiritual eyes. The flesh is dominating their life. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. When the God of this world blind the eyes of the people, it's difficult for them to believe the truth of the Most High's words. Only the Most High can open their eyes to truth. The people who can only see with the eyes of the flesh can't perceive truth. Therefore, they will react with unbelief. Israelites, the time has come for you to strengthen your spirit. Another reason the Most High allow you to see what is happening behind the scenes in the spirit realm, to give you the chance to change the outcome. Once the will of the Satans and the workers of iniquity manifest in the physical realm, you have to engage in spiritual warfare to be set free. If you don't pray and fast, the workers of iniquity will enslave your spirit until you recognize the covenant and break the covenant through spiritual warfare. Before the evil covenants gets to the point of manifesting into the physical realm, the Most High give you the opportunity to pray against and to cancel the covenant when he show you what is happening to your spirit in the spirit realm. Remember, the Most High will honor all covenants. Israelites, having dreams and visions is not only about future prophecies. Dreams and visions is a form of communication between you and the Most High. Now that you know there's more to your dreams and visions, I want to take you back to the butler and the baker's dreams. When we analyze the baker's dream, the symbols used to interpret the baker's dreams is far from the language of the physical realm. Joseph said to the baker that in three days he would die. If you use the language of the physical realm to decode the baker's dream, death would not be the meaning to the baker's dreams. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. When you use the language of the physical realm to interpret the baker's dream, death would not be the result to that dream. If the baker saw people going to his funeral, that would better symbolize death if we analyze the dream using the language of the physical realm. Joseph interpreted the dream for the baker. The baker's dream was a negative dream. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. When you use the word of the Most High to decode the symbols in the spirit realm, you will comprehend why the baked meats, the birds eating the baked meats from the top of his head was a negative dream symbolizing the baker's death. Israelites, earthly food does not feed your spirit. Earthly food only feeds your flesh body. The beast system is plagued with genetically modified food. Even the fake food can't nourish your body properly. That is why so many are plagued with deadly diseases in the beast system. Earthly food is not a symbol that is used to feed your spirit in the spirit realm. The Most High often use books and scrolls that have an aftertaste of honey as the symbol that feeds your spirit in the spirit realm. In the scriptures, the Most High gave the prophet Ezekiel a scroll to eat. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, 
and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Bread is also a symbol that can be used in the spirit realm that nourish your spirit. Whenever you see yourself eating earthly food like meat or greasy food in the spirit realm, that symbolizes witchcraft attack using the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity is sent to plague your body with a sickness that would lead to untimely death. The baker seeing baked meats being eaten by the birds on top of his head is a negative dream. To see the bird eating the baked meats from the top of his head does symbolize death. Birds are often associated with death in the scriptures. The scripture said, wherever the carcass is, the fowls of the air will gather. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. In the physical realm, we can witness vultures eating dead animal carcasses. In the baker's dream, the birds were eating baked meats from the top of his head, symbolizing that the birds would eat his body. The three baskets on top of his head revealed that the dream was about his life. If the three baskets was on top of someone else's head, then the dream would be about that person. Joseph interpreted the dream by revealing that in three days, the king will kill the baker and the birds will eat his flesh. Later in the scriptures, we read that indeed the king killed the baker by hanging him on a tree. The scriptures has given us many stories of people's flesh becoming food for the fowl of the air. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Birds in the spirit realm symbolizes death. If you see yourself being attacked by a bird in the spirit realm, that is a negative dream. The scriptures also associate the beasts of the earth with death. If you see yourself being attacked by the animals, the scripture labeled the beasts of the field, lions, tigers, and many other land animals, the dark powers of this world sent the spirit of death after you. There are many other ways the spirit of death show up in the spirit realm. A clever way the spirit of death is sent is when you see yourself engaging in activities that result in death according to the laws of the Most High. The book of Leviticus give us a list of sins that result in death if you engage in it. The sin of bestiality is a sin that result in death. The scripture said both the person and the animal should be put to death. Another sin that result to death is if a son sleep with his father's wife. The penalty of that sin is death. And the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Reuben, Jacob's firstborn son, committed the sin of uncovering his father's nakedness when he slept with Bilhah, his stepmother. Jacob intervened on his behalf by praying for him. That is why the Most High did not kill Reuben. As a result to his sin, he lost the firstborn birthright. The testament of Reuben will explain further of what happened between Reuben and Bilhah. If you see yourself being intimate with a family member where the laws of the Most High say the penalty for that sin is death, that is another way your dream is revealing the spirit of death was sent against you. Birds are not the only symbol that symbolizes death in the spirit realm. As your knowledge increases about the symbols you see in the spirit realm, the easier it becomes to decode the symbols. Israelites, you have to decode the symbols by using the word of the Most High. The baker said, there was three white baskets on his head. The basket on the very top had all kinds of baked meats. Everything the baker saw had a meaning in the dream. Joseph said that the white baskets symbolizes the number of days his dream would manifest in the physical realm. Israelites, I hope you're beginning to comprehend the language of the spirit realm. Never use the language of the physical realm to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. 
in the butler's dream, the three branches he saw also symbolized the number of days he would be restored to his position. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. Three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the form of manna when thou wast his butler. The scriptures give us many examples of dreams and visions that could help us decode the symbols we see in the spirit realm. Jacob, our father, had several dreams recorded in the scriptures. When the Most High was transferring Laban's wealth to Jacob, the angel of the Lord, Michael, instruct Jacob in the spirit realm on what he must do to receive his wages from Laban. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and gristled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Israelites, as you heard in the scriptures, the angel of the Lord instruct Jacob on how to receive his wages from Laban. Your dreams is a form of communication between the Most High and you. In the spirit realm, the Most High direct your path. It's important that you increase your knowledge about the spirit realm. Some of your prayers are answered in the spirit realm. Israelites, this is what walking in the spirit looks like. The angel of the Lord was with Jacob to do the will of the father by providing and protecting Jacob. Just as the angel of the Lord said to Jacob that he heard his prayers and saw the altar of pillar, he made and anointed when he made a vow to the most high. The angel of the Lord also instructed Jacob to return to his father's house. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. I find it interesting that our people accept the intercessor as the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament they can't accept him to be an angel. Religion fooled many to believe he's now the father in the flesh. I recommend you all to reread the scriptures. This time, ask the Most High for the spirit of wisdom, discernment, and understanding to better decode the sealed scriptures. Israelites, animals in the spirit realm can symbolize unclean spirits. Oftentimes, unclean spirits masquerade themselves like animals to conceal their identity. The book of Revelation revealed to us about the three unclean spirits that took on the likeness of frogs in the end times. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The book of Revelation is a compilation of dreams and visions John saw in the spirit realm that was preserved throughout the generations. Most of the scriptures you're reading are dreams and visions the prophets before us have written in their generation. None of what is being revealed in the book of Revelation were events that has taken place in the physical realm when John had the visions and dreams. This is why the book of Revelation is mainly used to point us to the signs of the times. All the events that we're reading in the book of Revelation has happened in the spirit realm. Some of the signs of the times in the book of Revelation haven't manifested in the physical realm yet. Israelites, this is why I tell you everything happens in the spirit realm first. If you want to know what is happening to your spirit and the world around you, it's important that you know what is taking place in the spirit realm. John said that he saw three unclean spirits that had the appearance of frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The symbol that is used to identify the unclean spirits were frogs. When you see frogs in the spirit realm, know that they are unclean spirits. Frogs are marine spirits. 
Most animals that live in water or near the water usually symbolizes marine spirits in the spirit realm. John went on to say that the unclean spirits were spirits of devils working miracles. But they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. John confirmed to us that some animals in the spirit realm symbolize unclean spirits. They are spirits of devils working false miracles, as well as misleading the kings of the earth to battle. The Satans are using these unclean spirits of devils to recruit the kings of the earth to fight against the army of the Most High on that great day. Israelites, can you now differentiate the language of the spirit realm with the language of the physical realm? It's important that you don't use the language of the physical realm to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Using the language of the physical realm to decode the symbols in the spirit realm will lead to confusion. The Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Israelites, now do you understand why your spiritual journey is a personal relationship with the Father? Your relationship with the Father is nothing like religion has made it to be. You have a role to play, and the Father has a role to play. You can believe in the Messiah and follow the Messiah back to the Father. However, you still have a role to play in your deliverance. Just because you can find forgiveness of sin when you repent, it doesn't mean you sit back and do nothing from now on. This is the dangerous doctrine Rome has been teaching for multiple generations that kept our people in bondage until this day. A lot of you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but your spirit is still in bondage. How could this be when the God of this world said, whoever the Son set free is free indeed? If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. How is that you have accepted their version of the Messiah and he hasn't set you free? Your spirit is the real you. Any injury your spirit receives in the spirit realm has consequences. That is why a lot of you are living a defeated life. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people's spirits is malnourished and caged. You can give thanks to the head leaders of the synagogue of Satan, the Roman Catholic Church. They are the leaders controlling the doctrines you learn in religion. Christianity is not the only faith the mother harlot control. The mother harlot control all religion, as well as all the kingdoms of this world. That is why you can find altars built to their God, Jesus, in every nation. You're going to know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Where do you believe Lucifer's seat is located? Did not Lucifer said he would sit on the top of the congregations in the sides of the north? Where is the Vatican City located? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Israelites, the spirit realm is very important in your spiritual journey. Why wouldn't religion teach you about the spirit realm if what is taking place there manifests in the physical realm? The head leaders of the synagogue of Satan don't want you to become free. That is why they teach you lies to keep you in rebellion against your God. Rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft, said the scriptures. Religion is nothing but witchcraft and idolatry. Idolatry is a sin the most high hates. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Another scripture in the word of the Most High that symbolizes unclean spirits with animals in the spirit realm is a scripture found in the book of Luke. The Most High said to us, I have given you power to tread on scorpions and serpents, as well as all the power of the enemy, and by no means could they hurt you. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why would the Most High give us power to tread down scorpions and serpents? We can easily kill these animals in the physical realm. In addition, most of us are not under any threats by these animals in the physical realm. The scorpions and serpents the scriptures are referencing are unclean spirits. I know a lot of you have had dreams with serpents in them. 
The workers of iniquity love to use serpents to attack you in the spirit realm. Serpents also symbolize marine spirits in the spirit realm. The Most High reassure us that he has given us power over the unclean spirits as well as the entire kingdom of darkness. When you know the word, use it. Another scripture in the Bible that symbolized unclean spirits with animals is when the Most High said he would give us back the years the caterpillar, the canker worm, and the locusts have stolen from us. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Again, I will say majority of us are not under any threat by caterpillars, locusts, and canker worms in the physical realm. In the spirit realm, when you see these animals, know that that is an unclean spirit disguising itself as such animal to establish the covenant. You can associate locusts with the stripping spirit. You can also associate these animals in the spirit realm with the spirit of poverty. The Most High said to us that he would give us back the years these unclean spirits have stolen from us. Israelites, despite what the enemy prepared for us, the Most High has made a way to deliver us from their traps. You have to decide to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. You have to put on the armor of the Most High to stand against your enemies. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Satans and the entire kingdom of darkness have many ways to come against you. If you serve the Most High, the Father, in the spirit and in truth, the Most High will cause your enemies to flee before you seven ways. The only reason some of us are trapped in the beast culture is due to a lack of knowledge. Now that the Most High is exposing the secrets, take advantage of the knowledge he's making available to you in the last days. The Most High did say, in the last days, knowledge would increase. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Israelites, the truth of the Most High's words will not correspond with the half-truth of the beast culture. Nor will the truth of the Most High's words give you confirmation to the doctrines of devils from religion. The truth you're learning in the awakening is meant to sanctify you, in addition to influence you to let go of the idols of the heathens and return to the Father. Listen to the Father when he reach out to you in the spirit realm. The remnant know the voice of the Most High, the stranger's voice they will not follow. Israelites, trust the Most High with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Give the Most High the opportunity to show you who he is. The time has come for us to return to the God of our fathers. Give the synagogue of Satan back their God. You don't want their useless gods. To the remnant, allow the Most High to direct your path. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they 
before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Israelites, we will get right into it. We left off with the Most High using the locusts, canker worms, caterpillars, and the palmer worms as symbols that represents the stripping spirit. The Most High said to his people that he would give us back the years these animals have stolen from us. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. All of us have experienced devastation of some sort. None of us credit the locust, canker worm, caterpillar, and the palmer worm as the root cause to the devastation we've experienced. How can the Most High give us back the years the locusts and the other animals mentioned in the scripture have stolen from us? When you use the language of the spirit realm, these animals represent unclean spirits that come to strip you of your wealth and devastate your life. Remember when the Most High used the locusts to destroy the crops and devastate the land of Mizraim? The Most High sent the locusts to eat all the herbs in the land of Mizraim, as well as all the crops the previous plague did not destroy. The locusts devastated the land of Mizraim. In the land of Goshen, where the Israelites live, were not affected by the locusts and all the plagues the Most High sent into Mizraim. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them, there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt. The Most High used the locusts to strip Mizraim of its food resources, as well as to devastate the land of Mizraim for refusing to let his people go. When the Most High said he would give us back the years, the locusts, the caterpillar, and the other animals mentioned in that scripture have eaten from us, the locusts, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar represent the dark powers behind the unclean spirits that have stolen from us behind the scenes. A lot of people forfeit their blessings to unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity because of a lack of knowledge. The heathens are rich because of all the stolen land and resources they have taken from the indigenous black people worldwide. None of the riches the other species of mankind gain were obtained through family inheritance. The seed of the fallen have no inheritance in this earth. That is why the Most High divided all the land on this earth to Noah's three sons. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth, after the flood. The descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth inherited the earth. The seed of the fallen don't descend from the sons of Noah. That is why they had to steal, kill, and destroy to obtain the wealth they have today. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, the Satans control this world through their seed. If the indigenous black people would finally humble themselves and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, they would be in control of their resources and land. The dominion given to them by the Most High, the indigenous black people would possess. Because the Israelites and the other indigenous black people forsake the Most High for the idols of the heathens, the dominion they had over the earth was transferred to the wicked. The scripture said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? It was because the descendants of Adam followed the seed of the fallen into sin, the dominion was given, not taken, but given to the wicked. The indigenous black people have a role to play in their demise. I've noticed that a lot of blame is placed on the heathens for the downfall of the indigenous black people. 
while a lot of Israelites refused to acknowledge the role the indigenous black people played in their own demise. Even in this generation, many refuse to take accountability for their actions. It's always someone else's fault in the indigenous black community. When the people of the Most High stop forsaking the Father, he can return to you the years the locusts have eaten. When the kingdom of darkness come to establish covenants in the spirit realm, majority of the time they are successful because the people of the Most High have no knowledge of what is happening to their spirit in the spirit realm. Israelites, don't perish for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Our ancestors forsake the father to worship and serve idols. When our ancestors decided to follow the heathens, that was the beginning to their downfall. However, the downfall of the indigenous black people continue for multiple generations because of a lack of knowledge. Instead of establishing a relationship with the father for themselves, the indigenous black people follow trends. Some refuse to work out their salvation. Some Israelites are looking for someone to do the work for them. That is how the false prophets and the ministers of Satan are able to control the indigenous black people for generation after generation. A lack of knowledge is the cause for many people's downfall. If you knew of the promises the Most High made to the righteous, majority of Israelites wouldn't be perishing for a lack of knowledge. Let the truth of the Most High's words sanctify you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Animals in the spirit realm can symbolize unclean spirits. Cats in the spirit realm can symbolize witchcraft power within your household. Flesh-eating animals also can symbolize unclean spirits as well as the hierarchy of the devil. For example, a lioness in the spirit realm can symbolize a high-level witch. The larger the animal appear to you in the spirit realm could determine how powerful it is, as well as how much of a hold it has on your life. An oversized animal can symbolize a high-level devil, just as a tiny animal can symbolize a lower-ranking devil depending on what is being revealed to you in the spirit realm. The tiny animal can also symbolize a new devil trying to enter or has entered your life, but don't have much power as of yet. Keep in mind, Israelites, not all animals you see in the spirit realm represent unclean spirits. That is why it's important to ask the Most High to give you the interpretation of what you saw in the spirit realm. When the Most High give you the interpretation, you will be able to decode the symbols. A good example that not all animals symbolize unclean spirits in the spirit realm. In a good dream, some animals can represent wages and power. Joseph, the son of Jacob, had a dream where he saw his brother's sheep bowing down to his sheep. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. In Joseph's dream, the sheep symbolized the authority Joseph had over his brothers. Joseph started by saying they were binding sheep in the field. Because it was his brothers and him binding the sheep, the dream is informing us that the dream is about Joseph and his brothers. If Joseph saw someone else other than his brothers binding the sheep, then the dream would be talking about that person. We know the dream is talking about Joseph and his brothers because Joseph saw himself and his brothers binding the sheep. Joseph revealed that his sheep stood upright, symbolizing the power Joseph had, while his brother's sheep stood around and acknowledged the power by bowing down to Joseph's sheep. After Joseph told his brothers of his dream, his brothers interpret the dream by saying, Will you reign over us? And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. In a good dream, an animal can symbolize power or authority. That was the interpretation in Joseph's dream. Indeed, the dream of Joseph reigning over his brothers were true. 
After his brothers sold him into slavery, the Most High was with Joseph and he became second in power in the land of Mizraim. His brothers had to come to him to purchase food to feed their family due to the famine. When his brothers came to him, they bowed down to him just as his dream revealed. Joseph was the governor over the land of Mizraim, making him a ruler over his brothers. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. The Most High used Joseph to lead the world out of a famine in his generation. As you can see, Israelites, the Most High made Joseph a leader over the land of Mizraim in the spirit realm long before it manifests into the physical realm. I hope you can now see the importance of knowing what is happening in the spirit realm. Everything that takes place in the spirit realm will manifest into the physical realm. The Most High revealed to Joseph of his destiny as a young man in the spirit realm long before it manifests into the physical realm. Prophecy are events that have taken place in the spirit realm that has a set time to manifest in the physical realm. The kingdom of darkness is aware of this. That is why they come to deceive you in the spirit realm. As long as you don't know anything about the spirit realm, they can rob you there and you will have no idea on why you're living a defeated life in the physical realm. The workers of iniquity and religion will keep you ignorant about the spirit realm to continue to attack, control, and rob you in the spirit realm. They will tell you to fight back in the flesh to rule over you. Animals in the spirit realm can symbolize wealth. The scripture said that Abraham was rich in cattle as well as in silver and gold. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. In the generation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a person's wealth was based on their livestock as well as gold and silver. It made sense that during the time of Jacob, the symbol used in the spirit realm to symbolize wealth was goats, sheep, and cattle. When the Most High transferred Laban's wealth to Jacob, Jacob saw in a dream that all the cattle that were speckled would be his. That's how Jacob knew to ask Laban for all the cattle that were speckled. And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-straked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Jacob, our father, walked with the Most High. Jacob Vala vowed to the Most High that if he would protect and provide for him, he would be his God. Jacob served the Most High, that is why the Canaanites feared him. The Canaanites knew he was a mighty man of the Most High. The testament of Joseph revealed that the Ishmaelites were afraid of Jacob. That is why they sold Joseph to a woman from Mizraim. The Ishmaelites didn't want Jacob to find Joseph in their possession. When I heard this, my bowels were dissolved and my heart melted, and I desired greatly to weep, but I restrained myself that I should not put my brethren to shame. And I said unto them, I know not, I am a slave. Then, therefore, they took counsel to sell me that I should not be found in their hands. For they feared my father, lest he should come and execute upon them a grievous vengeance, for they had heard that he was mighty with God and with men. The Most High communicated with Jacob frequently in the spirit realm. It was in a dream the Most High revealed to Jacob that Judah had an angel of might that goes with him everywhere. 
Due to Jacob receiving this information via the spirit realm, Jacob was at ease when his sons went to war. Our ancestors knew the importance of the spirit realm. As a people, we forgot our culture, our customs, and our God. Therefore, our people started to follow the heathens. In the mix of following the heathens, we forgot how to serve our God. Religion was the mechanism the Satans used to help us forget our God and our inheritance. If our ancestors honored the Most High and passed down our culture and traditions to the next generations, we wouldn't have forgotten our heritage and our God. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Unfortunately, living multiple generations without proper leadership cause our people to lose our heritage, as well as forgetting our God and trading our glory for religion. Jacob saw in the spirit realm that the Most High paid him his wages in the form of livestock. In the generation of Jacob, their form of money was livestock, gold, and silver. In our generation, paper money as well as gold and silver represents wealth. It made sense for Jacob to see cattle as the form of his wages in the spirit realm. Bread, honey, and milk also symbolizes increase or wealth in the spirit realm. Israelites, you can't use the language of the physical realm to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Use the word of the Most High to help you decode the symbols. While we are on the subject of animals in the spirit realm, I want to warn you about monitoring spirits in the form of animals. Israelites, witches and warlocks use monitoring spirits to spy on their victims. In the beast system, the workers of iniquity depict monitoring spirits in the form of magic mirror that can show the workers of iniquity whatever they want. Israelites, monitoring spirits are very real. Monitoring spirits show up in the physical realm in the form of birds, squirrels, flies, spiders, and many other animals. When your spirit is more dominant over the flesh, you will begin to differentiate monitoring spirits from animals foraging or existing around you. Monitoring spirits in the form of animals have a distinctive behavior that only your spiritual eyes can see. When you grow spiritually, your spirit will become sensitive to the wickedness around you. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. As you heard in the scriptures found in Ecclesiastes that the birds will go and tell the matter. The workers of iniquity frequently send monitoring spirits to monitor their victims. Monitoring spirits often manifest in the physical realm in the form of birds. Israelites, there are some symbols you will see in the spirit realm, and you won't find scriptures to decode the symbols. This is where you have to trust the Holy Spirit in you. You will have to trust the voice of the Most High when he speak with you. Jacob, our father, trusted everything the Most High said to him in the spirit realm. Matter of fact, our ancestors, the Most High used to write the scriptures, they had to trust what the Most High said to them in the spirit realm. Most of them did not have scriptures to confirm what they saw in the spirit realm. Remember, majority of the scriptures are dreams and visions. The Most High asked the prophets to write everything they saw as well as everything the Most High said to them in the spirit realm to help guide future generations. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Israelites, I've said to you in previous messages that there are some things the Most High will share with you and show you in the spirit realm that will require great faith to believe. Sometimes you're not going to find scriptures that confirm what the Most High is saying to you. You must use discernment and trust the Father. If you're unsure, always look for the Most High's peace. A lot of Israelites are programmed to serve the Father the way religion have taught them. Religion failed to teach the people to walk in the Spirit. Because many don't know how to walk in the Spirit, they are always looking for a scripture to support what the Most High is revealing to them spiritually. The Most High said if there's a prophet among you, he will make himself known to him in a vision and speak with him in a dream. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. 
There's a lot of Israelites in the awakening proclaiming to be prophets, yet they know nothing about the spirit realm. How is the Most High making himself known to these so-called prophets in a vision and speaking to them in a dream if they don't believe in the spirit realm and they don't know how to decode the symbols they see in the spirit realm? Israelites, this is why it's important for you to test their spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Israelites, the time has come for us to not allow ourselves to be deceived by the ministers of Satan. Just because a person memorizes the scriptures, it doesn't mean they understand what the scriptures are revealing. Just because they study the scriptures, it doesn't mean they were called. Just because they have many followers, it doesn't mean they were chosen. Remember, broad is the road that leads to destruction. Just because a person is born male, it doesn't mean they are a prophet. Test their spirit. Regardless if they proclaim to be prophets or not, test their spirit so that no one leads you onto the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The prophets and the chosen of the Most High will be meek. The spirit of pride will not have any authority over them. With that being said, know that there are some things that will require faith to believe. If you believe in the Father and put your trust in him, he will lead you to eternal life. The Most High has put me in positions where I had to exercise great faith to believe what he said to me. Some of the things the Most High said to me, I had to stand on my own with no support from others for confirmation. As I believe the Father, I watched the Father manifest what he said he would do. Words cannot explain how it feels to trust the Father with all of your heart and no one around you believe. Then watch the Father make his words come to pass before your very eyes. I've seen the Most High show his sovereignty in my life on multiple occasions. Words cannot explain this great feeling. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Israelites, you will find yourself standing alone when you walk in the Spirit. Don't fail the test and trust the Father. I remember when I was being called a racist and my name slander for talking about the seed of the fallen and revealing the identity of the hybrids many years ago. Now so many are teaching about the seed of the fallen. Soon many will finally understand the role of the prince over our people. Right now, the spirit of unbelief has blinded their eyes. Those that will inherit eternity will come to the realization. When the Most High speak with his prophets in a dream and vision, the Most High will use that prophet to serve his purpose. The Most High could use that prophet to do something new or to fulfill what has already been done in the spirit realm. If the Most High decided to do something new, whatever the Most High revealed to the prophet, he has to trust the Most High and know that whatever the Most High promised and prophesied, he will do. The Father said his words would not return to him void. Therefore, the Most High will use the prophet to carry out his will. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. There will be symbols the Most High use in the spirit realm, and you won't find scriptures to confirm. An example is when you see bees in the spirit realm. I know a lot of you have had dreams about bees in the spirit realm. In a negative dream, bees can symbolize unfriendly friends. It can also symbolize conspiracy. Your unfriendly friends are conspiring against you. You should be on high alert of betrayal and people gossiping about you. You might want to reevaluate your friend circle when you see bees in a negative dream. Joseph had a dream that prophesied the dispersion of the 12 tribes. Joseph saw a vision which he shared with his children. Joseph said he saw 12 hearts feeding. A heart is a male deer. Joseph said he saw nine of the hearts dispersed all over the earth and the other three was also dispersed. Joseph said this would take place in their season in the last days. And hear ye, my children, also the vision which I saw. There were twelve hearts feeding, and the nine were first dispersed over all the earth, and likewise also the three. And I saw from Judah was born a virgin wearing a linen garment, and from her was born a lamb without spot. And on his left hand there was as it were a lion, and all the beasts rushed against him, and the lamb overcame them, and destroyed them, and trod them underfoot. 
And because of him, the angels and men rejoice in all the land. And these things shall come to pass in their season in the last days. The Assyrian king took 10 tribes into captivity. The northern kingdom went into captivity first, confirming Joseph's vision of the nine hearts being dispersed all over the world first. Judah was taken into captivity after. Our fathers was aware of their descendants being dispersed all over the world. The Most High told the sons of Jacob in the spirit realm. As you can see, Israelites, our captivity took place in the spirit realm long before it manifests in the physical realm. We are the generation living the prophecy the Most High revealed to Joseph in a vision in his generation. The dispersal of our people happened over 400 years ago. The Most High used the heart's feeding to symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel in the spirit realm. As you can see, Israelites, animals in a dream can represent unclean spirits, wealth, and people. Now we will get into non-animal symbols many of you see in the spirit realm. You heard earlier in the message of bees in the spirit realm symbolizing unfriendly friends and conspiracy. The Most High can warn you about a betrayal as well. A symbol that can represent a coming betrayal in the spirit realm is kissing. A lot of you would not link being betrayed with kissing. If you go into the word of the Most High, when Judas Iscariot betrayed the Messiah, the sign of betrayal Judah Iscariot used to identify the Messiah to the workers of iniquity was a kiss. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And while he yet spake lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came. And with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they, and laid hands on Jesus, and took him. Israelites, know that the interpretation of the symbols mentioned are general. Some symbols may have several meanings. It all depends on what you're seeing in the spirit realm. Majority of the symbols shared in this message are common symbols many people see in the spirit realm. A kiss in the spirit realm can also symbolize covenant. It all depends on what the dream is revealing to you. You're in the best position to know what the dream is saying to you. Judas Iscariot betrayed the Messiah with a kiss. So if you're kissing some random person or a random person is forcing a kiss on you, know that could symbolize betrayal. Colors in the spirit realm are also symbols. Everything you see in the spirit realm matters. Some of you probably seen yourself attending a celebration or a party and everyone at the party are color coordinated. Seeing yourself attending a party where everyone is wearing the same clothes or same color symbolize initiation. Some witch or warlock is initiating you into their coven. A lot of you witness these rituals in the physical realm. You have seen the celebrities all white parties. Those parties are rituals. Some of the party attendees don't know they are being initiated. Witches and warlocks can initiate you into sorcery without you having any knowledge of what they're doing. A lot of you were initiated into witchcraft and sorcery through family traditions and religion. Idolatry opens the door to witchcraft. You can't practice idolatry without witchcraft. They go hand in hand. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Majority of Israelites are idolaters. Witchcraft is when you use the powers of demons and idols to get what you want. A lot of Israelites serve the idols of the heathens, making their God an idol. When you give the heathen gods a sacrifice, you're making your sacrifice to a devil and not to the Most High. Many Israelites make excuses for their sin. They will come up with multiple reasons unto why they're not idolaters, despite the scripture saying that they will serve other gods in the land of their captivity. A lot of Israelites continue to serve idols in the awakening. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. 
and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. For some Israelites, they feel if they're not bowing down to white Jesus, but they envision in their mind that they are serving a black Messiah, they are not idolaters. An idol can be anything, money, people, the fallen angels, unclean spirits, your children, your job, and many other things can be an idol. Idolatry is not only associated with religious figures. If you worship the Messiah, you're an idolater. So many do not realize that the Messiah is the biggest idol of all times. Worshiping the Messiah is worshiping the creature more than the creator, just as the scripture state. The father said there should be no other gods before him. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. The Israelites practice idolatry from the beginning up until now. Idolatry never stop in our nation, which is why the Most High removed his people from his presence. We are living in the land of our captivity because of the great sin of idolatry. Duality is the mechanism the Satans use to deceive you. Regardless if the heathens disguise their idol gods as the Most High, you're still guilty of idolatry. Even though religion deceive you into believing they serve the Most High, Israelites, you perish for what you don't know. That is why the Most High is giving you the opportunity to repent as well as making the truth known in the last days. To the Israelites that deny their involvement in idolatry, another symbol you will see in the spirit realm that will reveal that the idols in your family is seeking a covenant when you see dead family members in your dreams. These spirits are ancestral spirits. Ancestral spirits are the idols your family serve. They show up in the spirit realm seeking a covenant by taking on the likeness of your deceased family members to get you to serve them. The consequences of worshiping ancestral powers are generational curses. Generational curses are also a sign of idolatry and witchcraft in your family. The Satans have many ways to deceive you. That is why you must humble yourself and repent daily. You may think you're not an idolater, no practice sorcery. However, the Most High is showing you in the spirit realm that idolatry is in your family and is affecting you. The Most High said he would punish the children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fourth generation. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. If your grandfather serve idols, the repercussion of this sin will show up in your family up to four generations. Your grandfather's sin will affect you and your children. If you continue in your grandfather's footstep by worshiping the idols he served, another four generation will be affected by your actions. That is how ancestral spirits travel in a bloodline. The consequences to your grandfather's actions are generational curses. The Most High put generational curses upon his people for a sign. The reason the Israelites are plagued with generational curses, they are a rebellious people. The root to rebellion is witchcraft and idolatry. The scripture said rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is like idolatry. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. To the self-righteous Israelites, humble yourselves. I laugh at people who think that they are better than others, especially our people who believe they so righteous and that they can slander others for what they perceive to be false. Little do they know they are idolaters and workers of iniquity. The sad part is that they don't even know it. Majority of Israelites who slander and come against their own are puppets for the kingdom of darkness. For a long time, I disliked my father Judah until the Most High said to me, you're no different from him because you come from him. To the Israelites that shame others, you're no different from the people you try to slander and shame. You come from the same family. You're no different from them. The Most High will reveal your secrets. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. 
thy dream, and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter, and he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. Be careful on exalting yourself above others, especially when you're guilty of the same sin behind the scenes. The last dream I want to share with you that will show you that the colors you see in the spirit realm matters when the Most High gave Levi the priesthood. In the spirit realm, Levi saw seven men wearing white. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying unto me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood and the crown of righteousness and the breastplate of understanding and the garment of truth and the late of faith and the turban of the head and the ephod of prophecy. And they severely carried these things and put them on me and said unto me, From henceforth become a priest of the Lord, thou and thy seed forever. White in a positive dream can symbolize purity and holiness. In a negative dream, white can symbolize death. Remember the baker who had three white baskets on his head? The baker made sure to tell Joseph the baskets were white. In the physical realm, when a person passes away, their body is often covered in white sheets. Israelites, know that there are good dreams and evil dreams. You have to differentiate between the two. Ask the Father to help you by giving you the spirit of discernment. Always accept the positive dreams and cancel the negative dreams. The color red in the spirit realm can symbolize danger. Other common dream symbols I would like to share with you that can help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. A house can symbolize your life or the life of the person it belongs to. Each room in the house is specific to a certain area of your life. Your bedroom is an intimate place as well as a personal space. Anything you see that takes place in your bedroom in the spirit realm can be symbolizing personal issues. Cars, bus, airplanes, bicycles can symbolize your destiny. If you see someone else driving your car, this can symbolize that you're not in control of your life. The final symbol I want to share with you is police officers or military people in a dream. I've seen people share dreams stating that the end is near and persecution is upon us because they see military personnel and police officers in a dream about destruction. Police officers can symbolize covenant enforcers. In a negative dream, the unclean spirit that masquerade as an officer is coming to enforce the covenant they made with you. In a positive dream, the police officer symbolize the most high arresting the power coming against you, giving you victory. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. If you see the police officer arresting someone that offends you, or they attack everyone around you and not touch you, the Most High gave you power over the enemy. Never use the language of the physical realm to decode spiritual symbols in the spirit realm. Israelites, as the Most High increase your knowledge about the spirit realm, it will become easier to decode what you see in the spirit realm. Know that you're not going to know everything. Establish a partnership with the Father so that he can help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Don't rely on other people to do the work for you. Nobody is going to do the work for you. Not even the idol God called Jesus. The time has come for you to take up your cross and follow the Father. When you put your trust in him and lean not to your own understanding, the Father will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Israelites, there's countless dreams and visions in the scriptures that can help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Open the Bible as well as the Apocrypha books and read the scriptures. Ask the Father to give you the spirit of discernment as well as guidance through his Holy Spirit. 
Ask the Father, where should you start? Don't let the Satans deceive you into thinking that learning about the spirit realm is complicated. The scripture said to cast down every wicked thoughts and imaginations that rise against the word of the Most High in your mind. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wicked thoughts come from the Satans. The Satans plant evil thoughts into your mind to establish covenants as well as to distract you from your purpose. Israelites, there are countless other symbols I can share with you. Watch the older videos I did about the Spirit Realm and the Spirit Realm playlist, as well as the Spirit playlist on this channel to help you decode the symbols. This is the real awakening, not the false awakening that is an extension to Christianity. You have to work out your salvation. You have to step up and take control over your life. When you make up your mind to serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, the Father will be with you every step of the way. Israelites, you can't avoid spiritual warfare. All of us have to engage in spiritual warfare if we want to be free from spiritual bondage. Israelites, your dreams and visions are not given to you for no reason. The spirit realm reveals everything you want to know about the physical realm and more. Increasing your knowledge about the spirit realm will give you an advantage over your enemies. The people of the Most High need to deal with the spiritual bondage that has been a burden for multiple generations. Let go of the ways of the heathens and follow the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The time has come for you to walk in the spirit. And I will strengthen the house of Judah. And I will save the house of Joseph. And I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them and gather them. For I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries. And they shall live with their children and turn again. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear Him, and keep His commandments, and obey His voice. And ye shall serve Him, and cleave unto Him. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way, which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Israelites, another chapter is needed to help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. There's so much that could be said to help you decode your dreams. 
like the subject of witchcraft and idolatry, Decoding Dream Symbols also need a series of its own. We will analyze a few more dreams in the scriptures to help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm, as well as what you could do to help you become free from spiritual bondage. A lot of Israelites are aware of the physical bondage through the manifestation of generational curses. However, not too many Israelites are aware of spiritual bondage. Religion plays a major role in keeping the Israelites and the indigenous black people bound spiritually. The beast system is controlled by witchcraft and idolatry. The scripture said in the book of Enoch that our downfall came because we learned all the abominations of the angels. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the satans and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. We were ruined because we learned all the abominations of the Satans. Israelites, witchcraft and idolatry did not begin with the indigenous black people. The scripture revealed to us that the fallen watchers taught their sons and wives witchcraft. All the abomination known to mankind were taught by the fallen angels. The scriptures went on to reveal what each angel taught mankind. Witchcraft and idolatry is not a practice the indigenous black people knew until the fallen angels taught mankind this abomination. The seed of the fallen learned all of these abominations from their fathers, the watchers. A lot of people get the watchers confused with the angels that fell with Satan. The angels that fell with Satan are one group and the watchers that fell are another group of fallen angels. The fallen watchers were led by 200 angels. Azazel is one of the leaders of the watchers. He it is that taught mankind how to make weapons, as well as makeup and many other abominations. And Azazel taught man to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of autonomy and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones, and all coloring tinctures. Thou seest what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. Israelites, it's important for you to know who the scriptures are talking about. Because the workers of iniquity replace names with titles to confuse you, when you read the title Satan in the scriptures, it's important that you know which Satan the scripture is referencing. The Satan Gadriel is not the same Satan as Azazel. Gadriel is the Satan that deceived Eve in the garden. Azazel is one of the leaders over the watchers that fell. That is why I say the Satans. There are multiple Satans. The title Satan means adversary. We have many adversaries. When you know the targeted person, the scriptures will become clearer. Israelites, know that the root cause to our downfall is that we learn the abominations of the angels. A lot of indigenous black people wanted to possess the knowledge the angels have. Their curiosity caused them to lose the dominion given to them by the Most High. The scriptures revealed that Canaan found the teachings of the angels from previous generations written on a wall in a cage, and he wrote them down and never told Noah about the teachings. He called his name Canaan, and the sun grew, and his father taught him writing, and he went to seek for himself a place where he might seize for himself a city. And he found a writing which former generations had carved on the rock, and he read what was thereon and he transcribed it in sin owing to it. For it contained the teachings of the watchers in accordance with which they used to observe the omens of the sun and moon and stars and all the signs of heaven. And he wrote it down and said nothing regarding it. 
for he was afraid to speak to Noah about it, lest he should be angry with him on account of it. As you can see, Israelites, our people have been interacting with the angels from the beginning. The fallen watchers taught their sons everything. The seed of the fallen continued to exist until today. That is how a population of people whose genetic makeup is nothing but recessive genes are dominating the original people that are made in the image and likeness of the Most High. All the abominations the watchers taught their sons are found in every generation. Today, the indigenous black people are reaping the repercussions of learning the secrets of the angels. The Most High said to his people on multiple occasions, learn not the ways of the heathens. The Israelites rebel against their God. The indigenous black people welcome and followed the seed of the fallen when they came bearing gifts that are laced with curses. The moment the indigenous black people accepted their cursed gifts and facade of being peacekeepers, the seed of the fallen colonized them, genocide some indigenous black bloodlines and assumed their identity. Today, some indigenous black people worship the seed of the fallen. Some are doing whatever they can to marry a descendant of the fallen. Why would you trade your glory for the lesser? The scripture said in the Bible, the most high made man a little lower than the angels. But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. The angels have the ability to operate in the physical and spiritual realm. The angels can transform their image to resemble mankind to walk among us. The angels that came to rescue Lot and his family before the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah confirm the angels' ability to transform. The scripture said, be careful on how you treat a stranger. You may entertain angels unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Not only can the angels take on the likeness of humans to maneuver in the physical realm undetected, the Most High says certain angels over different parts of his creation. Every nation have a prince over it. There are angels that operates the Most High storehouses. There are angels over the elements as well as angels that control the sun, moon, and the stars. The angel series on this channel will guide you further on the angels who control certain aspects of the Most High's creation. The scriptures reveal to us that there are 300 angels that is upkeeping the Garden of Eden. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. Just because we're banned from entering the Garden of Eden, it doesn't mean paradise doesn't exist. Our true home still exists. Just because Adam and Eve are not in the garden anymore to upkeep their home, it doesn't mean the garden is not being supervised and maintained. The angels will continue to upkeep the Garden of Eden until the Most High redeemed Adam and Eve and the righteous of their descendants. Once the redemption of the righteous come, the Most High will lead Adam to the Tree of Life to eat. The tree of life will become food for the righteous. And as for the fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The holy angels are in charge of the Most High's creation behind the scenes. When the fallen angels begin to interact with mankind in a way that goes against their nature, that is when the original people begin to worship the fallen angels. The indigenous black people mistake their supernatural ability as being worthy to worship. Israelites, every god the heathens worship are fallen angels. The people who worship these demons utilize the powers these advanced beings have to manipulate and control. Demons crave worship. As long as the people bow down to worship them, they will give the people who serve them a false sense of security. Why on earth would Satan now say to the Messiah, all the kingdoms of this world I would give to you if you would bow down and worship me? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain 
and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Because the Satans crave worship, they will manipulate all who will feed their gratification and being worshipped. The Satans deceive the people who worship them into believing they can do what only the Most High the Father can make happen. The Satan called Gadriel manipulated Adam and Eve in the garden by promising them the Godhead. Satan manipulated some angels by promising them great kingdoms if they followed him. Satan cannot fulfill anything he promised. That is why he must deceive to get many to follow him. O oh, Adam, Ask him who deceived thee to give thee the divine nature he promised thee, or to make thee a garden as I had made for thee, or to fill thee with that same bright nature with which I had filled thee. Ask him to make thee a body like the one I made thee, or to give thee a day of rest as I gave thee, or to create within thee a reasonable soul as I did create for thee, or to remove thee hence to some other earth than this one which I gave thee. But, O oh Adam, he would not fulfill even one of the things he told thee. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said unto him, Canst thou make me a garden as God made for me? Or canst thou clothe me in the same bright nature in which God hath clothed me? Where is the divine nature thou didst promise to give me? Where is that fair speech of thine thou didst hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said unto Adam, Thinkest thou that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I ask. Everyone who follow and worship the fallen angels are being deceived into believing the Satans can give them the desires of their hearts. The fallen angels have a way of manipulating mankind to worship them without giving them what they want. We have witnessed on multiple occasions people rising to power and when they exalt themselves over the Most High, their kingdoms fall and they lose everything. Lucifer wanted to be like the Most High. He declared in his heart he will exalt his throne above the stars of the Most High. He said he would sit on the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. The Most High said to Lucifer that you will be brought down to hell to the sides of the pits. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. The Most High don't play with his glory. Indeed, Lucifer was brought down to hell to the sides of the pits. Today he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for who he can devour because he's mad. He is full of wrath. Remember King Nebuchadnezzar? The Most High used him to remove his people out of his presence. As soon as he exalted himself over the Most High, his kingdom fell. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The Satans cannot give you the desires of your heart. I don't know why people worship and serve these powerless devils. The Satans must steal from the righteous to give to the wicked. When the righteous lack knowledge, they unknowingly forfeit their possessions. A lot of people get robbed in the spirit realm. When you see someone take something from you and run away and you didn't reclaim it, that is a devil that robbed you in the spirit realm. When you see police officers take possessions of your things in a negative dream, that is another symbol revealing you've been robbed in the spirit realm. We all have seen celebrities who sold themselves to the beast system. They gain great wealth, power, and money. The moment they get tired of doing the rituals and stop worshiping the devil they sold their soul to, they lose everything before their untimely death. 
The only reason the other species of mankind have dominion over the earth is due to the fall of the indigenous black people. If the indigenous black people would serve their creator, the Satans and the other species of mankind would lose dominion. The Most High said in his words, I have given you power over scorpions and serpents in the entire kingdom of darkness, and by no means can they hurt you. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The authority made available to his people only benefits the righteous who serve the Most High, the Father. There's a lot of Israelites looking to reap from the authority and power given only to the righteous who serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. You can't serve the idols of the heathens. In addition, replace the Father with the Messiah that disguised himself as God in the flesh and expect to reap from the power and authority made available to the righteous. When you serve the Most High, the Father, you tap into powers that can move mountains. The power that Satans and the other species of mankind possess are temporary. The Satans don't have absolute power over the kingdoms of this world. The scripture said all of their possessions and wealth belong to the righteous. At the appointed time, the righteous will inherit their possessions. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The Most High appoint kings and dethrone kings as well. The Most High changed the seasons and does whatever he wants. The Satans manipulate men into believing there are gods to get the worship they desire. Because majority of indigenous black people cannot comprehend what is spiritual, they are easily manipulated by witchcraft and idolatry. Because many Israelites and indigenous black people have seen what the fallen angels could do through the power the heathens who rule over them have, they are fooled into worshiping the gods of the heathens to obtain equality with their oppressors. That is why so many protest in the beast system for equality. Israelites, I say all this about the angels because the fallen angels are responsible for teaching mankind all the abominations on earth. That is why all the sins of the world is pinned against the Satan, Azazel. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. There are people who openly and willingly worship the Satan called Azazel and many other Satans. Little do they know these Satans they worship and exalted are pleading for their life. They asked Enoch to pray for them as well as asked Enoch to intercede on their behalf with the Most High for mercy and the Most High denied them mercy and forgiveness. These are the gods the heathens and many indigenous black people worship. Yet these great gods, so many exalted over the Most High are pleading for their life. Why would you forsake the Most High the Father to make powerless created creatures your gods? Don't trade your glory for the little gods that cannot do anything for you. Israelites, the time has come to put an end to the great sin of idolatry in our nation. And go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. And Enoch went and said, Azazel, thou shalt have no peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bounds, and thou shalt not have a toleration nor request granted to thee, because of the unrighteousness which thou hast taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou hast shown to men. Then I went and spoke to them all together, and they were all afraid, and fear and trembling seized them. Israelites, in order to triumph and over everything that is oppressing you, you must get to the root. The root to all your problems stems from witchcraft and idolatry, the fallen angels taught to mankind. Just as you heard in the scriptures in the book of Enoch. Israelites, a lot of your dreams are witchcraft related. 
Majority of your problems are witchcraft attacks. The beast system is powered by witchcraft and idolatry. The spiritual wickedness in high places engage in behind the scenes. Witchcraft is when humans use the powers of demons and unclean spirits to advance. The gods of the heathens are demons. That is why the Most High said in his word in the book of Corinthians that the heathens make their sacrifices to devils and not to the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The root to your oppression and everything that you go through stems from witchcraft and idolatry. Your dreams will reveal this to you. Many of your dreams are witchcraft attacks. Israelites, that is why the religion called Christianity brainwashed you into accepting an idol as your Lord and Savior. It was important for you to accept the false Messiah that is supposedly God in the flesh as your Lord and Savior. When Israelites accept a false God as their Savior, the spirit of idolatry gives the Satan's access to you as well as cause a separation between you and the Most High. Israelites, I will repeatedly say to you until you understand that our Savior is the Most High, the Father. Outside of the Most High, there is no Savior. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who is I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people? And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. The Most High will select whomever he choose to work through to redeem the righteous. The Satans are passing down witchcraft and idolatry through religion and man-made traditions. The scriptures warn us about the traditions of men. The scriptures say we will put aside the commandments of the Most High to follow man's traditions. Albeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. The traditions of men are witchcraft and idolatry. The workers of iniquity perform witchcraft rituals in public and in private settings to obtain favor from the fallen angels they worship as gods. Israelites, the time has come for you to understand fully that the gods many people accept in worshiping the beast culture, the God that is popular among all nations, is not the Father, the God of Israel. This is why you must stop following the traditions of this world and what is popular with men. The wicked don't worship nor serve the Father. All who follow the God of this world worship the fallen angels and unclean spirits. Israelites, now that you know the root cause to all of your problems, you can now set your face against the devils oppressing your life through spiritual warfare. Israelites, when you know how to fight back, you will begin to see the manifestation of power in the physical realm. If Israelites take heed to this series and take control of their spirit in the spirit realm, you will begin to see the favor of the Most High over your life. The scripture said in the book of Chronicles that when the Israelites began to worship and praise the Father, the Most High set ambushments against the enemies of Judah. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Our ancestors during the time of King Jehoshaphat humbled themselves. They fast and prayed. They began to worship the Father. The Most High gave them victory over their enemies while they were praising the Father and singing. Israelites, do not underestimate the power of praise. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. 
or with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Sometimes all it takes is faith and praise. After repentance, you will begin to see the most high sovereignty. Israelites, we will discuss further in another chapter about deliverance after the chapters on decoding dreams finish. Israelites, while the Most High is increasing your knowledge in the last days, utilize the wisdom you've gained to overcome spiritual bondage. A lot of you who take heed to this series and apply what you learn to your life will begin to see an increase of attacks against you. The reason? The kingdom of darkness and the workers of iniquity want to intimidate you with fear. The devils increase the attacks to discourage you. Religion has taught the people that when you're under heavy attacks and everything seems to be falling apart in your life, sin is the reason and you need to return to the Father. Israelites, that's not always the case. When all hell breaks loose in your life or all over the world like we're seeing globally, don't you dare panic. Don't allow fear mongering to disable you. Most importantly, don't underestimate the most high at this time. When all hell break loose, this is when you need to take a back seat and watch the most high fight for you. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Israelites, don't mistake the chaos for failure. When you engage in spiritual warfare and the Most High accept your sacrifice, world peace and love is the last thing you should expect. Spiritual warfare is war. You fight in spiritual warfare. Your opponents are the principalities and dark powers of this world, as well as the unclean spirits and the spiritual wickedness in high places that the eyes of the flesh cannot see but are very active in the beast system. The Most High don't fight like the heathens war. The Most High don't need to come off his throne to fight people in the flesh. When the Most High command the angels that operate the storehouses that are reserved for war, the elements alone can destroy your enemies. We see the Most High respond with what the heathens call natural disasters. The Most High has his angels over his creation. There are angels that control the elements. There's nothing natural about wildfires, tornadoes, hurricanes, and other disasters that destroy nations and cause many fatalities. The time has come for you to recognize when the Most High is fighting for you. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? When all hell break loose, praise the Most High. All who put their faith in the Most High and trust the Most High will be preserved. Remember, the population to the remnant is very small. Let the Most High purge the wicked. The population of the wicked is in the billions. The Israelites and the other indigenous black bloodlines are not exempt from the population of the wicked. If they serve the idols of the heathens and follow the beast culture, their blood is on their own hands. The word of the Most High said all the wicked of his people will surely die. Just because you see indigenous black people caught in the so-called natural disasters, some of them did not take heed to the warning the Most High sent to them via the spirit realm and the physical realm. In addition, a lot of people you know personally and care for are not a part of the remnant. How many of your family members and friends still follow everything the heathens does, despite the Most High exposing the secrets of the heathens? Israelites, wake up. Religion deceived many to believe that everyone goes to heaven. If everyone is in heaven, why is the road that leads to destruction massive? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, don't let the workers of iniquity deceive you into believing when you're under attack, you've lost the battle. You're under attack because you won the battle, and the devils are trying to find a way to put you back into spiritual bondage. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to stand firm and trust the Most High. I will share with you symbols you will see in the spirit realm that is a warning or confirming a matter. Israelites, there will be covenants established in the spirit realm that you can't control. 
There are events pending against your life that you cannot change. The Most High will show you in the spirit realm. When the Most High show you these things in the spirit realm, you have no choice but to brace yourself for what is to come. A symbol that indicate you need to prepare or confirming the matter. When the Most High does it twice or show you twice. Twice indicate confirmation, just as the scripture said it takes two or three witnesses to confirm the matter. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Jacob, our father, had a vision before the Most High gave him instructions on how he would multiply into a great nation. The Most High called Jacob's name twice. After calling Jacob's name twice, Jacob responded and the Most High identified himself. The Most High instruct Jacob to go to Mizraim. The Most High went on to tell Jacob that he would make him a great nation there. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. As you heard in the scriptures, the Most High called Jacob's name twice, to confirm to Jacob that he should do what he asked of him. The Most High called Moses' name twice before the burning bush. The Most High did the same thing to Samuel. Samuel did not understand when the Most High called him. He went to Eli because he thought Eli was the one calling him. Eli instructed young Samuel on what to do when he heard his name being called multiple times by the Most High. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called to Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went, and lay down in his place. And the Lord came, and stood, and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. When the word of God came to Seth after the death of Adam, the word of God called Seth's name three times, then proceed to tell Seth that he would be with him just as he was with his father. When the Most High call your name two to three times, whatever he say to you, he will do. The scriptures in the Bible reveal to us about two dreams Pharaoh had that prophesied about the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river, and the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. None of the magicians and workers of iniquity in Mizraim could interpret the dreams. The butler whom Joseph interpreted his dream when he was in prison finally remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh about Joseph. Pharaoh sent for Joseph to get the interpretation to his dreams. When Pharaoh asked Joseph to interpret the dreams, Joseph responded to Pharaoh just as I have responded to some of you when you asked me to help you interpret your dreams. Only the Most High can interpret your dreams. 
If the Most High want you to know, he will reveal it to the person he gave the interpretation. Israelites, only the Most High can interpret your dreams. You need to understand this. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Israelites, it's important that you understand only the Most High can properly interpret your dreams. After Pharaoh finished telling Joseph of his dreams, Joseph said to Pharaoh that his dreams were one. Joseph said to Pharaoh that the Most High showed him what he was about to do. Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kine are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. As you can see, Israelites, both of the dreams Pharaoh had were one dream. Joseph said to Pharaoh, because the dream was doubled, meaning revealed to him twice, the Most High has established the matter and it will surely come to pass. The time set for his dreams to manifest would be soon. Joseph went on to tell Pharaoh that he should begin to prepare. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. The words of the Most High confirm, when you see it twice, or the Most High does it twice, the matter is established, and it will come to pass. Joseph was wise to instruct Pharaoh to prepare. Likewise, Israelites, when the Most High warn you in the spirit realm by showing you twice, don't sit around and do nothing. You have to prepare for whatever is coming. A lot of Israelites in the awakening don't know if they should flee or stay in the USA. There are doctrines encouraging Israelites to flee. Israelites, what did the Most High say to you? Have the Most High tell you to flee? Let me remind you that you will find a devil everywhere you go. There are principalities and powers over every nation. There's not a nation safe from the wrath of the Most High. Besides, the Most High did say he would gather his people from multiple countries from all over the world. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Paphros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Israelites, listen to the Most High when he alert you in the spirit realm about upcoming events that is pending against your life. If the Most High show you twice, the matter is confirmed and it will come to pass. If fleeing to another nation is not an option, you have to prepare in whatever city and country you live in. The Most High will protect the righteous. Did not the Most High tell you when all hell break loose at the time of Jacob's trouble that your prince will stand up for you? When your prince stand up for you, you would be delivered, everyone whose name is written in the book. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Israelites, the time has come for you to read the scriptures with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Everything you want to know, the Most High will reveal it to you. You have to do your part and know the word of the Most High to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Everything you need to know on how to walk in the spirit is in the scriptures. A lot of this information was hidden from you because of religion. 
When the Most High began to open the sealed scriptures, the people it was given to know the mysteries will see the truth of the Most High's words in the scriptures. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Religion wasted your time. The awakening is giving you back the years the locust that is in the form of religion have stolen from you. Take advantage of the wisdom. Another symbol that can confirm a matter and there's nothing you can do to change the outcome and all you can do is prepare when you see yourself crying in agony. This symbol was shown to me in the spirit realm when the Most High wanted to prepare me about my late brother. The symbol of me crying in agony in the spirit realm over my brother shook me. I didn't understand at the time when I saw it. All I know was that I had to get ready for some changes. I thought I had to help my brother get his life together and I started to help him. However, three months later, my brother transitioned to the afterlife. There was nothing I could do about it because it was written. The Most High alerted me in the spirit realm to prepare. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The Most High is talking to his people. His people can't understand him. Religion has blinded the eyes of many. The idols of the heathens has caused a separation between the Most High and his people. Remember, Israelites, you can't serve two masters. The fate of your salvation is in your hands. The spirit realm is not bound by time. That is why everything that is going to happen in the physical realm already happened in the spirit realm. I say it's important for you to know about the spirit realm. There are many other common dream symbols many of you have, like being chased in the dream by a mad person. Running away from people and being chased by a crazy person revealed that your spirit is malnourished. You need to feed your spirit to stand against the devils. A malnourished spirit can cause serious injuries. When you're feeding your flesh body, remember to feed your spirit with the word of the Most High. The scripture declared that man does not live by bread alone. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Israelites, there are countless other dream symbols. However, we can't analyze them all. The word of the Most High can help you decode them. All of the symbols we discussed so far are common and I gave you a general meaning to them. Some of those symbols have many interpretation. Spend time in the presence of the Most High to find out what they mean. Israelites, you don't want to wait until it manifests in the physical realm to take control over your spirit in the spirit realm. Utilize all of the resources the Most High made available to you. Always put your trust in the Father and he will direct your path. The Most High is making his words alive again in the awakening. Israelites, you don't want to pass on this great opportunity our generation gets to experience. This is our time. Let us build a foundation that the future generations can prosper from. The time has come for the people of the Most High to take heed to his words. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee, she shall bring thee to honor, when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee.
Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Israelites, now that majority of you have a basic knowledge and understanding on how to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm, we will move on to the topic on how to maintain your deliverance. A lot of Israelites don't know when they've been delivered. Most Israelites don't know what deliverance look like. As soon as the Most High delivered his people from spiritual bondage, many return into bondage because they are unaware that they have been set free. The Israelites who know they've been delivered from bondage don't know how to maintain their deliverance. The main reason some Israelites and indigenous black people don't know how to maintain their deliverance, religion played a key role in disabling the people of the Most High. While the Israelites and indigenous black people are distracted with religion, the idols of the heathens have blind their eyes. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Spiritual warfare is a battle. When you live on a battlefield, you fight. In addition, you're always on guard. The scriptures warn us to be alert because our adversaries are always looking for someone to devour. A lot of Israelites believe we are the final generation living in the times the scriptures call the last days. The signs of the times are upon us. Some Israelites believe because this is the last days, all they have to do is wait on the Most High to deliver them. Most Israelites believe Yahshua is coming any day now to save them. Israelites, did you know the disciples believed they were living in the last days when the disciples and many others gathered in a room when the Holy Spirit came? The effect the Holy Spirit had on the people who received the Spirit was that they began to speak in their native tongues. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? The scriptures clearly said the people began to speak in their native tongue. The workers of iniquity and religion indoctrinate the people to believe if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. I wonder what tongues are they talking about? The scriptures clearly said everyone began to speak in their native language, not the gibberish we've heard and seen in religion. When the Holy Spirit came and everyone was speaking in their native tongues, the people thought those who were speaking in their native language were drunk. Peter stood up and addressed the cause to why the people were speaking in their native language. Peter said, prophecy is being fulfilled. Peter went on to say that the prophecy by the prophet Joel that said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh was being fulfilled. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, Be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. But these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The prophecy of the Most High pouring out his spirit on his people for them to dream dreams and to prophesy. Peter declared that the prophecy came to pass in his generation when they received the Holy Spirit. When the Most High sent the Holy Spirit, that happened many years ago. According to Peter, the people alive at that time believed they were living in the last days. Fast forward to today, our generation is here and majority of Israelites believe we're in the last days. When Joseph shared the vision he had of the 12 tribes being scattered all over the world to his children, he said that the disperse of the 12 tribes would happen in its season in the last days. And hear ye, my children, also the vision which I saw. There were 12 hearts feeding, and the nine were first dispersed over all the earth, and likewise also the three. And I saw from Judah was born a virgin wearing a linen garment, and from her was born a lamb without spot. And on his left hand there was as it were a lion, and all the beasts rushed against him, and the lamb overcame them, and destroyed them, and trod them underfoot. And because of him the angels and men rejoiced, and all the land. And these things shall come to pass in their season in the last days. The Israelites were scattered over 400 years ago. The current generation of Israelites living in the diaspora are the descendants of the Israelites who were sold into slavery and scattered all over the world. Many generations have come and gone, and they believe they were living in the last days. Joseph's vision came to pass long before our generation existed. This generation believe they're living in the last days. Israelites, just because some of us believe we're living in the last days, or we may be the final generation, we still have to be vigilant and alert. Living in the last days doesn't mean you sit around waiting on the Most High to take vengeance. While you're waiting on the Most High to vindicate you, your enemies continue to find ways to devour you. Israelites, the Satans will continue to tempt you until the very last day and hour. Regardless if you believe we're the final generation, you have to put on the armor of the Most High. You still have to fight until you transition to the afterlife. Regardless if you're one of the few predestined to witness the day Michael, the great prince, stand up for our people and all the righteous, you have your personal battles. Remember, Israelites, many prophecies have to be fulfilled before our redemption. All things written must be fulfilled. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Israelites, don't let the signs of the times become a distraction. When it comes to your spiritual journey, you have to have balance. Too many Israelites are focused on prophecy instead of the battle that is taking place in front of them. The battle for your mind. The battle for your destiny. Israelites, don't forget about your personal battle to free yourself from spiritual bondage. Our redemption is prophesied. While we wait for our redemption, we have individual battles we must deal with. Don't let religion's one-size-fit-all narrative cause you to neglect the war in front of you. A lot of Israelites in the awakening are focused on what's happening everywhere around the world. They forget to pay attention to what's happening in their personal life. The scriptures reveal to us that the Satans have the power to do lying wonders. They can imitate the signs of the times. You have to differentiate the Satan's lying wonders with the prophecies from the Most High. All prophecy will be fulfilled at its appointed time in the way the Father said it would happen. We have seen the workers of iniquity in the beast system imitate prophecy. Israelites, be vigilant and spend time in the presence of the Father so that you won't be deceived by the false miracles and lying wonders from the Satans. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. 
and deceived them that dwell in the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. While we are discussing lying wonders, I believe the recent alien sighting in Peru was a lying wonder. The beast media claim majority of the tribes that live in remote places are uncontacted people. It's difficult to have a conversation with the tribes that are not involved with society. The moment a seven-foot alien shows up in their backyard, the beast media can reach those people. Israelites, the workers of iniquity go to great length to hide the remains of the giants found all over the world. Suddenly, a floating giant alien show up in a remote village in South America. They have coverage. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand when the Satans want to deceive or imitate the Most High. Making themselves known and visible to humans is not the way they operate. Remember, Satan and his angels was cast down to the earth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Israelites, we live among the fallen angels. Since the fall of these wicked angels, we have yet to have a sighting of Lucifer and other principalities in the flesh. The workers of iniquity love to do their dirt in secret. The workers of iniquity hate being exposed. The Satans want you to believe the seed of the fallen and everything about them are myths and fairy tales. That way, when they deceive you, nobody will believe they exist, and everyone will discredit you for believing in what they call fairy tales. Israelites, use discernment when it comes to the signs of the times and the scriptures. The remnant elect will not be deceived by the lying wonders from the spiritual wickedness in high places. The population of the elect is not the majority. Therefore, many will be deceived by the lying wonders from the Satans because the population of the wicked is broad. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, you're not going to see a seven-foot alien taking a seat in the third temple and declaring himself to be the Most High when the men of sin comes on the scene. The fallen angels can transform themselves. Israelites, with today technology, it wouldn't surprise me if the workers of iniquity put a hologram of a floating seven-foot alien in the sky to scare the people. Most people who live in remote villages are not that familiar with advanced technology. The workers of iniquity know that most people who live in major cities and suburbs are well acquainted with AIs and technology. These people would know the difference. With today's CGI, computer-generated imagery, you can make anything happen. There's technology out today that can take your image and place you in a location and make it appear as if you were there. Recently, a woman was wrongfully accused of committing a crime. The facial recognition AI failed. Israelites, we must use discernment. The scripture said in the book of Enoch that the fallen can take many forms. And Uriel said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. Israelites, the fallen angels take many forms to deceive, just as you heard in the book of Enoch. Revealing their true identity and appearance is not going to make the people follow them. Instead, the people will begin to rebuke these devils if they knew who and what they are. That is why no one would recognize Lucifer or any of the fallen angels when they walk among us in the flesh. The scripture said in the book of Isaiah that when the Most High exposed Satan, many will be shocked by his appearance. A lot of people would say, this is the man that have terrorized the world. The scriptures reveal the people will not be impressed. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? 
that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. When the holy angels walk among us today, they take on the likeness of humans to operate. The angel that took on the appearance of man to save Lot and his family before the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah confirmed the angels can transform themselves. Jacob, our father, had a dream where he saw the angels ascending and descending upon the earth. The prince over our people and the commander of chief to the army of the Most High, the holy angel Michael, took on the appearance of a man when he came to assist Joshua when they were going to battle in Jericho. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? A lot is happening behind the scenes, Israelites. The angels of the Most High are everywhere in the physical realm. Because the Most High took the bright nature away from Adam and Eve, we can no longer see the angels operating among us with our physical eyes. We can only see them when they transform and take on the likeness of a human being. Israelites, if we see the angels in their actual essence, it would scare us to death. We are not used to seeing them in their true nature. That is why the people in Peru and all who have ever seen what they describe as aliens are afraid. The fallen angels and the holy angels are not going to make themselves visible to you for no reason. The seed of the fallen most certainly will not expose themselves in that manner unless the day of the Most High is here. Be careful about the Satan's lying wonders. Israelites, I notice in the awakening, a lot of Israelites is making it seem as if your redemption is a few hours away. I share scriptures revealing how our ancestors believe they lived in the last days. Israelites, use discernment. The scripture said nobody knows the day. Most people are speculating based on the times we're living in. The Satan's lying wonders will deceive many. The Most High will preserve the remnant elect to not fall for the lying wonders the workers of iniquity and the Satans will do to deceive the masses. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Israelites, don't get too consumed with end-time prophecies that you forget about the battle that is in front of you. Allow the Most High to direct your path so that you have balance on your spiritual journey. The personal battle that is at your doorstep should be your priority. The battle for our redemption belongs to the Most High. The way the Most High will redeem His people has been determined and already happened in the spirit realm. We all know the results of the battle. The righteous prevail over the Satans and the workers of iniquity. Our redemption has been sealed and the battle has been won. At the appointed time, it will manifest in the physical realm. When it comes to the personal battle that is in front of you, those battles are pending. Depending on your choices will determine if you will be a part of the redeemed righteous or will you follow the God of this world and all the wicked to the lake of fire. To the Israelites and the indigenous black people who choose to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, the scripture said many are the afflictions of the righteous. However, the Most High would deliver the righteous out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. As you can see, Israelites, the righteous will have many battles. In order for the Most High to step in to help you in your personal afflictions, you have to engage in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is when you involve the Most High in the conflict. In spiritual warfare, you're asking the Most High to deliver you from demonic oppression and every attack against you. Spiritual warfare is taking the battle to the front door of the devil that is oppressing you. 
spiritual warfare is saying enough is enough. When you involve the most high in the battle through spiritual warfare, make sure the life you live pleases the most high. If not, you will lose the battle. The enemy used the art of distraction to put many of you in spiritual bondage. While many Israelites are focused on being at the right place at the right time because of the signs of the times, the unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity that oppress your life in the spirit realm will continue to find success because your focus is on everything else but the war that is in front of you. Some of you are under heavy demonic oppression, yet you're in everyone else's business. You're trying to correct other people while you have legions of unclean spirits operating in you. The scripture said, take the beam out of your eyes first so that you can see to remove the moat out of your brother's and sister's eyes. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. A lot of Israelites are influenced by legions of demons. Unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity are ravishing their lives. They are losing the war in front of them, yet they are condemning other people. You have no room to fight other people's battles when you're under heavy demonic oppression. Deal with the legions of devils in your life first. Failing to deal with the issues in your personal life will cause even greater issues. Issues like generational curses. The signs of the times are here to let us know where we are on our journey to redemption. Israelites, the signs of the times is not supposed to stop you from dealing with the personal battles that are at your front door. One of the reasons so many Israelites can't maintain their deliverance, they allow the Satans and the kingdom of darkness to distract them. When you're distracted, you will fail to see when the devils return to reestablish the covenant. By the time you have realized the spirit of poverty or infirmity have reestablished a covenant, the result of their infiltration have manifested in the physical realm. Israelites, beware of when the devil return. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. A lot of Israelites are not expecting the devil to return after deliverance. Some Israelites believe when the Most High delivered them, they will never face oppression again. Israelites, that couldn't be the furthest from the truth. The Most High can deliver you from the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes. The next day or several months later, you start to see symptoms of diabetes. The reason you're seeing the symptoms to diabetes, the unclean spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes is trying to reestablish the covenant. If you're distracted with the affairs of this world and fail to see the spirit of infirmity fighting against you, the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes will successfully reestablish the covenant. The most common way the spirit of infirmity establish covenants in the spirit realm, when you eat in the dream or a worker of iniquity is feeding you in the dream. Being fed in the dream is a witchcraft attack. If the spirit of infirmity is a problem for you, when you're distracted, you will find yourself eating in the dream. When you wake up, the worker of iniquity will send a spirit to cause you to forget your dream. When you forget the dream, you also forget to cancel the covenant. When you fail to cancel the covenant, the Satans are successful in placing you in bondage again. A lot of Israelites return to bondage and fail to maintain their deliverance when they don't resist the devil. The scripture said, when you submit to the Most High and resist the devil, it will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Israelites who successfully resist the devil, your flesh body will suffer the effect of the spirit of infirmity trying to reestablish the covenant. However, the symptoms will disappear and you will quickly recover. Some Israelites mistake the devil returning as a sign of the Most High not delivering them. Like I've stated in previous chapters in this series, when everything falls apart, you're facing trials after trials, you successfully break the covenant and won the battle. The devil that was cast out is fighting with you to return. If you serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, make sure to keep a positive mind. Cast down all the wicked imaginations. 
the Satan's war with you in your mind. In the mix of the devil returning, they will bombard you with negative thoughts. Don't fall for it, but cast down those wicked thoughts. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The scripture said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Make sure to counter the negative thoughts with positivity. By doing that, the devil will flee from you. Israelites, did you know you can invite unclean spirits to tempt you with negative thoughts? You also can establish covenants with the negative thoughts the Satan's put into your mind. Israelites, it's extremely important to cast down those wicked imaginations. If the Most High deliver you from the spirit of poverty and you're rehearsing that you're broke in your mind and you speak those words out of your mouth, you gave the spirit of poverty an invitation to return. Be careful with the words you speak. Another reason Israelites are having a hard time maintaining their deliverance, a lot of Israelites assume their Israelite heritage make them righteous. In addition, they don't have to do a thing but wait on the Messiah to do all the work for them. If this is your belief and mindset, the Satans have deceived you. Your Israelite heritage is not going to stop a devil from oppressing you. Your Israelite heritage is not going to save you. Repenting and returning to the Father will save you. The scripture said all the wicked of his people will die. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Judgment starts with the Israelites. Don't let the Satans make you believe because you're an Israelite, you have an automatic ticket to eternity with the Father. The Most High is giving all the descendants of Adam and Eve the opportunity to repent and serve him. Everyone have to decide to serve the Father. Nobody's going to make that decision for you. The scripture said only a remnant will return to the Father. Despite the massive population of the Israelites, only a remnant will make the decision to return to the Father. Regardless if you're an Israelite or not, you have to decide to return. The Father is not going to make that decision for you. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Don't let religion deceive you into believing the God of this world took your sins away and all you have to do is believe. Before the Messiah, John said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Sitting around waiting on the Father to do all the work for you will not give you the result that you're looking for. Another reason so many Israelites return into bondage after the Most High has delivered them, they are not living a life that pleased the Father. The scriptures say when your ways please the Father, he will make your enemies at peace with you. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. If your enemies are waging war with you and you can't find peace, you need to examine yourself to see if there's an offense against you. If sin is found, the Most High is not listening to your prayers. Remember, sin separates you from the Father. Sin will hinder your prayers. If the Most High is not listening to your prayers, you don't have the help of the Father and you don't have access to the army of the Most High. If the angels the Most High gave charge over you are not delivering you, when the Satans, the unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity come to steal, kill, and destroy, your deliverance will be short-lived. Israelites, make sure you're living a life that pleases the Father. When the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, the Father will make your enemy your footstool. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Religion have indoctrinated the people to believe they can live any kind of lifestyle and the Father will accept their abominations and bless their sins. Sin separates you from the Most High. Israelites, that is why it's important to repent daily. When I say repent, I'm talking about true repentance. Repenting is not saying, I repent and continue to behave in the way that gave the Satans and the workers of iniquity access to put you into bondage. True repentance will cause you to turn away from the sin that caused the affliction. True repentance will bring behavior changes. Another way your deliverance is cut short, unbelief. The spirit of unbelief will cause you to doubt the Most High. A double-minded person is unstable in everything they do. If you serve the Father and you truly believe in Him, make sure that you believe He is capable of doing what He say He will do.
for without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Majority of Israelites don't believe the Most High is able to deliver them. Some allow the Satans to deceive them to underestimate the power of the Most High. A lot of Israelites allow the present condition of our people to discourage them. You have to remember a lot of Israelites made the decision to serve the idols of the heathens. Some Israelites choose to follow the heathens. A lot of our people are as wicked as the heathens. There are some Israelites that don't have any faith in the Most High. In spiritual warfare, you can't doubt the Most High. You have to believe that the words of the Most High will not return to him void. If the Father said he will provide for you and protect you, Israelites, remind the Father of his words and hold him accountable for what he said he will do. A lot of you are living a defeated life because you don't ask the Father for help. When some of you ask for help, you lack confidence and you doubt the Most High. The spirit of unbelief hinder you. If you believe the Most High has delivered you, stand on it. Don't be afraid to approach the Father and remind him of his words. Israelites, go boldly in the throne room of the Most High so that you can obtain mercy in a time of need. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Israelites, there is a difference between being bold and being arrogant. Make sure to be bold with respect. A lot of people ask me, how do I do it? And how do I continue in this walk? This walk is hard. Israelites, believe it or not, I hold the Most High accountable. And I tell him exactly how I feel. And I expect the Most High to show up for me and I stand on it. When the enemy comes with the spirit of doubt, I cast down those wicked imaginations. Israelites, it's either you believe the Most High or you don't. Great faith will move mountains and cause the devils to flee from you. Having faith in the Father is believing that He can do exceedingly and above all that you can imagine. What is your faith if you don't believe the Father? Sometimes the Father tests your faith. Israelites, don't fail the test. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Israelites, it's important that you maintain your deliverance. Just because you won the battle, it doesn't mean the war is over. Remember, the devil always returns. The scripture said when the devil returns, it finds his house clean and everything in order. Then the devil decides to bring other devils more wicked than itself to try to enter your life. Israelites, this is where you have to recognize when the devil returns to resist the devil. When you're distracted like many Israelites are in the awakening, you're not going to see when the devil returns until it manifests in the physical realm. Israelites, it's better to shut down the devil in the spirit realm before the covenant manifests in the physical realm. Once the evil covenant manifests, you have to engage in spiritual warfare and experience all kinds of trials before you're delivered. This is why you should prioritize the war in front of you instead of the great war that is in the hands of the Father that has already been won. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The Most High said to his people in the book of Chronicles, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I would hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The purpose of the awakening is for the people of the Most High to humble themselves, repent, and return to the Father. The Most High has been pleading with His people to return to Him. The awakening is giving this generation the opportunity not only to return to serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, but to get to know the Most High, the God of Israel. All religious faith in the beast system don't serve the Most High. The awakening is giving this generation an opportunity to get to know the Father. Unfortunately, 
Too many Israelites have lost sight of humbling themselves. Some are declaring themselves to be great prophets and condemning many to hell. The enemy managed to distract a lot of Israelites. So many are consumed with the destruction of the beast system. Israelites, the destruction of the Satan's kingdom will surely come to pass. That war has already been won. Too many Israelites are focusing on the wrong thing. The personal war in front of you is far more dangerous than the war against the kingdom of darkness. A massive earthquake can take place and some Israelites are like, Yahshua is coming, prepare to leave. A tsunami destroyed a nation. The Israelites say, God is judging the wicked. The heathens say, an alien was spotted in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The Israelites are like, the scripture said, strange things would come out of the Euphrates River when it dried up. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Some Israelites know to repent when they see chaos in the beast system. They know how to apply the word and recognize the signs of the times. When an unclean spirit comes to attack them, they are lost and don't know what to do. The spirit of poverty will rob an Israelite in the spirit realm. That Israelite don't flinch. The spirit of infirmity wage war against them by afflicting their body. Some Israelites respond with, I will use over-the-counter medicine to heal myself. Marine spirits are destroying their children with all kinds of sexual perversions. Some Israelites respond with, love is love. The Satans have distracted and desensitized some Israelites from the war against them that most Israelites don't view the attacks from unclean spirits as a threat or a battle. Because so many Israelites ignore the war in front of them, the kingdom of darkness successfully put them back into bondage after they have been delivered. Some Israelites have to get their priorities in order. The scripture said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Israelites, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, this scripture should wake you up to prioritize the war in front of you. The battle is with the unseen, the principalities and dark powers of this world. When you battle, you're not fighting flesh. Why do you let the Satans distract you with the affairs of the flesh? Shift your focus to the spirit. When you focus on the unseen, you will be able to see when the devil returns with seven other devils more wicked than itself to fight against you. When you're vigilant and alert, you will see an attack coming from a mile away. By the time the devil gets to you, you've submitted to the Most High and prepared yourself to resist the devil. The devil have no choice but to flee from you. If you want to remain free, you have to maintain your deliverance. Spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. Disembodied spirits are looking for a home. Israelites, don't let your body become a haven for unclean spirits like the man in the tomb. Your body is the temple that housed the spirit of the Most High in your spirit. Let the unclean spirits know that there's no room for them in you. Israelites, let those devils be tormented in the dry places they have been cast to when the Most High delivered you. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely, in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah.
I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid, I said. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely, in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. All of us who have ever been a part of a religious faith, we're taught to pray to the Most High for everything. Along the way, religious leaders shift the focus from serving the Father to glorifying the God of this world. If you have been paying attention, majority of the world's population in the beast culture glorifies the Messiah and not the Father. According to the scriptures in the Bible, the journey to redemption began with the Israelites accepting the Father and the Most High established an everlasting covenant with his people. The Israelites depend on the Father for all their needs. Today, religious leaders through the beast religion have convinced majority of this world's population to seek and run after the deity called Jesus Christ. All people who have accepted Jesus rely on this idol to take their sins away. Israelites, nobody can take your sins away. Sin is breaking the laws of the Most High. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Israelites, taking away your sin is taking away the laws of the Most High. The Most High never took away his laws. The laws of the Most High are not done away with. The Most High used his laws to govern his creation. The Most High gave Adam laws to follow when he was in the garden. Why would religious leaders teach that the laws are done away with? Without laws, the people will become lawless. When you're lawless, anything goes. If the Most High took away his laws, then he shouldn't be mad when the people don't follow him. How can you transgress or sin if there's no law to break? If the idol of this world took your sins away, there wouldn't be a need for you to repent. The Most High gave his creation the opportunity to receive forgiveness of sin when they repent. Israelites, if the Most High took your sins away, why are you in captivity? Why does judgment starts with you? Why did the Most High remove you from his presence and allow the heathens to take your land if your sins were taken away? Why do you need to be redeemed if the God of this world took your sins away? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. According to religious doctrines, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your sins were taken away. A lot of Israelites accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior throughout history. How come your sins weren't taken away? Why are you still in the land of your captivity being oppressed? The book of Deuteronomy said, if you obey the laws, statutes, and commandments, all these blessings would come upon you. If you disobeyed, all these curses would come upon you. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Israelites disobeyed. From the time the Most High established his laws with the Israelites until this day, the Israelites suffered and paid the penalty for their sins. Even after the Messiah came, the Israelites' captivity wasn't reversed. You're still in the land of your captivity, living as bondmen and bondwomen. If your sins were taken away by the idol that saved you, why did the curses overtake you even after the Messiah died and took your sins away? Religion indoctrinate the people into believing as long as you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, heaven is your final resting place. Religious leaders use fear mongering to get many to accept Jesus. According to Christianity, Jesus is the only way. 
Anyone who don't agree with their doctrines are hell bound. Israelites, do you honestly believe the people who have a perpetual hatred for you, the same people who assist in enslaving you and put more value on their animals over you? Do you really believe your oppressors will help you find a way to eternal life? Your oppressors rule over you. Do you actually believe they will freely relinquish the power they have over you? Your oppressors go to great lengths to keep you in captivity. When will Israelites understand that all nations have conspired against you? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Presently in the awakening, we have come to find out that many of the doctrines taught to us in religion are false doctrines. The Satans indoctrinated the people in the various religious faith with false doctrines for multiple generations that so many are having a hard time departing from religion and their demonic doctrines. Now that the Most High is revealing all the secrets and everything that was done in the dark are coming to the light, some Israelites are struggling with the truth. The Satans use social media to give the ministers of Satan access to the lost sheep trying to return to the Father. The ministers of Satan are leading the sheep onto the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Religion is the system the Satans use to lead the sheep astray. Now that the truth is increasing the knowledge of the people, just as the Most High prophesied would happen in the last days, a lot of Israelites continue to use religion's traditions to return and to serve the Father. Instead of praying to the Father, many are praying to the God of this world that is disguising himself as the Most High in the beast system. More and more people are worshiping the Messiah because of the signs of the times. They are forsaking the Father unknowingly through Messiah worship. Throughout the scriptures, it was the Most High and His people. When the Israelites went astray to serve other gods, they would endure hardship. The hardship they faced would cause them to repent and return to the Father to find deliverance from their oppression. Throughout the scriptures, the Israelites would serve the Father only until the New Testament God Messiah showed up. When the New Testament God entered the picture, suddenly the Most High didn't mind sharing his glory despite punishing his people in all generations who serve and worship other gods. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Even in the Israelites' ignorance, the Most High punished his people for bowing down to other gods. I can't wait for the day to come when the Israelites who believe that Jesus is the most high in the flesh know that they are serving two masters. The scriptures clearly state you cannot serve two masters. Israelites, the awakening should open your eyes to see that we are a people serving a sentence for our transgressions against our God. If we serve our God in the spirit and in truth, we wouldn't be captives until this day. From the time the Most High removed his people from his presence until this day, they have been on a journey to redemption. Not many Israelites see themselves as captives. Israelites, you're not in your own land. Therefore, you're in captivity until this day. Your captivity ends when the Most High sent the prince he put over his people and all the righteous to deliver them. Until the appointed time for our redemption, we are supposed to be humbling ourselves praying, seeking the face of the Most High, returning to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. In addition, fighting against all powers, trying to lead us astray from our God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Praying is an important part of many people's lives who have some sort of faith. 
Despite knowing the importance of praying, not too many people know what happens after they pray, nor do they understand the process of deliverance. Now that the Most High is tearing down the demonic doctrines that had a strong hold over his people, the remnant in the real awakening are starting to understand how to establish a relationship with the Father and how to work out their salvation. The truth of the Most High's words are sanctifying his people. A small population of Israelites are allowing the Most High to transform them by renewing their minds. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Before we get into what happens after we pray, as well as the process of deliverance, a lot of Israelites have a false view of deliverance. Deliverance and our redemption are two different things. We all need to seek deliverance. Every day we are being tempted by unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity that attack us through witchcraft and sorcery. If you're under heavy demonic oppression, you need to seek deliverance. All of us are targeted by unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity. Therefore, none of us are exempt from attacks. Deliverance is a part of our lives since we live on a battlefield. All of Adam and Eve's descendants live on a battlefield. The Satans wage war with you. They want to eliminate all of Adam and Eve's seed so that they won't have anyone to inherit paradise. The Satans believe the Most High will restore them to their former glory if Adam don't have any descendants. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me, and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Israelites, you should expect temptations from the Satans, unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity who serve the Satans. Because the devils always return, we should always be ready to ask the Most High to deliver us from spiritual bondage. Israelites, deliverance doesn't mean you're never going to face trouble in your life again. You should always expect trouble from the Satans. The only time you are to let your guard down is after your redemption. Being redeemed is the final chapter. When the Most High redeemed his people, we no longer have to worry about sickness and death. We don't have to worry about the Satans and the workers of iniquity oppressing us ever again. While the Satans and all who follow them are in the lake of fire, the remnant will finally enjoy what the Most High wanted for his people from the beginning. Peace, love, and joy in paradise. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Israelites, our redemption and deliverance are two different things. All who are predestined to be redeemed will enjoy eternity with the Father. When it comes to deliverance, that is another obstacle. Israelites, the Most High can deliver you from one area of your life and the Satans attack you in another area. For example, the Israelite community as well as the indigenous black people collectively need to seek deliverance from the spirit of division. The spirit of division has a stronghold over the black community. Everyone can see that unity does not exist in the black community. The spirit of division is not the only spirit that have a stronghold over the black community. There are many other spirits that are oppressing black people as a whole. The Most High can deliver us from the spirit of division. However, the spirit of poverty continue to run rampant in the black community. Just because the Most High deliver you from one spirit, it doesn't mean he delivered you from all spirits that have a stronghold over your life. When the Most High deliver us from everything, that is our redemption. Don't confuse our redemption with deliverance. Spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. That is why you must keep the armor of the Most High on at all times. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You can fast and pray, engage in spiritual warfare, looking to be delivered from the spirit of poverty. The Most High deliver you from the spirit of poverty. 
your finances turn around and you now have assets to help sustain your lifestyle. While the Most High deliver you from the spirit of poverty, the spirit of infirmity continue to attack you. You have to seek deliverance from the spirit of infirmity as well as all the spirits that are oppressing you. Israelites, that is why it's important to know what spirit is oppressing your life. When you know what devil is attacking you, you can demand your sevenfold from that devil who have stolen from you. Remember, a thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Unclean spirits attach themselves to you to rob you. The scripture said, when a thief is caught, he must give back sevenfold of what he stole. Israelites, that is why it's important to know the word. That way, the Most High can give you back what the devil has stolen from you. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. The Most High will show you the devil in the spirit realm. That is why you must decode the symbols to identify the thief. Let's say you see yourself getting married in the spirit realm. In the physical realm, you don't have a relationship, nor are you engaged. Once you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm, and the Most High give you the interpretation to what you saw in the spirit realm. In this example, the dream is revealing a spirit spouse. When the devil is identified, you cannot target this devil. Close the doors that gave this devil the opportunity to tempt you. Target this devil in spiritual warfare. Pray against the spirit spouse. Break the covenant and command the spirit spouse, which is a marine spirit, to restore to you everything that it has stolen from you. You should always ask the Most High for a double portion. The Most High usually restore more than you have lost. The Most High gave Job double for everything he had lost. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Israelites, it's important to know the word. Also, you must know how to apply the word. I always ask for a double portion for everything. I ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment and wisdom. I even ask the Most High for a double portion of his spirit. Remember, some have not because they ask not. Israelites, Fasting and praying against a specific spirit is not going to cause all spirits that torment you to flee. Once you identify the devil, you have to war against that spirit as well as all the other spirits working against you. The scripture said in the book of Matthew that when the devil returned, it finds his house clean and in order. The spirit that called you his house recruit other spirits more wicked than itself to reclaim its home. Then go with he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The man in the tomb confirmed what the scripture said about the devil bringing seven other spirits more wicked than itself to dwell there. The man in the tomb had legions of devils occupying him. Israelites, it's important for you to understand that spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. Just because you receive deliverance from one spirit, it doesn't mean all your problems are solved. Israelites, once the Most High deliver you from a devil, you have to maintain your deliverance. You're always going to deal with a devil or worker of iniquity coming against you. If you're righteous and you're living a set-apart life that pleases the Most High, the enemy will use the people around you that are jealous or hate you to oppress you. When you serve the Most High, he place a hedge around you. The Most High also give his angels charge over you. The Satans, the workers of iniquity, and the unclean spirits can't get to you. Remember when the Most High said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Satan replied with, Didn't you put a hedge around him and everything that he has? Israelites, as long as the hedge of protection is around you, the kingdom of darkness can get to you. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. The moment the hedge of protection was removed, Job experienced all sorts of trials and tribulations. 
If the life you're living pleases the Most High, the workers of iniquity will find it difficult to attack you. The Satans will use the people around you to get to you. The Satans will use the lawless people around you to influence you to let your guard down. Social media is the gateway for the kingdom of darkness to use the lawless to corrupt many others. The lawless on social media are usually popular with a large following. Israelites, be mindful of the people you hang with and you let enter your personal space. Israelites, it's best to have a few good friends than a large group of friends that are truly your enemies. Israelites, it's better to live a private life when you serve the Father. To the people that question why some of us are private, we don't want to give the enemy the opportunity to attack us through lawless people. It's nothing personal, it's just using discernment. Anyone's spirit that disturbed my spirit, I don't associate with them. I cut them off quick. Keeping bad company can certainly corrupt you. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner. With such an one, know not to eat. Israelites, you have to be selective about everything, especially with the people you associate with. You don't want the legions of devils operating in them to oppress you. The time has come for you to use discernment. The Satans will use the people closest to you to attack you. That's why you have to keep the armor on. Be careful of the company you keep and the people you call friends. There are some Israelites who believe they don't have any unclean spirits operating in them. When I said in a video a few years back and I continue to speak on the topic of everything is a spirit, some people laugh and said personalities and traits can't be spirits. The people who don't believe that personality and traits are spirits, these are the very people walking around with legions of demons attached to them, like the man in the tomb. The only difference between them and the man in the tomb is that the man in the tomb was aware of the legions in him, and when he saw the Messiah, he ran to him seeking deliverance. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Israelites, everything is a spirit. What you call personality traits are spirits. Death is a spirit. Hate is a spirit. Unbelief is a spirit. Meekness is a spirit. Discernment is a spirit. Wisdom is a spirit. And the scriptures refer to the spirit of wisdom as a sheep. Some of you are literally like the man in the tomb and have no idea. At least the man in the tomb seek deliverance when he saw the Messiah. Today, Israelites are walking around with heavy demonic chains on their life and they have no knowledge. Some Israelites never repented nor break the covenant they made before their awakening. Those covenants are still valid regardless if you're in the awakening. You have to denounce the idols you serve. You have to break those covenants, not only the covenants you establish, but your ancestors' covenants as well. The scripture said to repent of the sins of your fathers. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. As you can see, Israelites, deliverance is an ongoing process until the day of our redemption. Just because you were delivered from a devil, it doesn't mean you won't ever need deliverance again. A lot of people are expecting their problems to never exist after deliverance. That is false. You will go through all kinds of trials and tribulations. The enemy will keep tempting you until the day you leave this realm. The scriptures tell us to pray. The word of the Most High went on to say, pray all kinds of prayers. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Every spiritual and religious person know that you must pray if you want the help of the Most High. It has been ingrained into our minds to pray to God for everything that we need. Praying is talking to the Father. If we want an intervention from the Father, we must pray and ask the Most High what we need. A lot of people pray and when their prayers are not answered in the way that they thought, it caused them to doubt and question the existence of the Most High. 
Because religion failed to teach the people the process about prayer, most people believe that their prayers are unanswered. Israelites, if you have been paying attention, most of the time after you pray or fast, when you sleep, you dream. Because the people lack knowledge about the spirit realm, they had no idea that the Most High would respond to their prayers in the spirit realm. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Most of the time, the answer to your prayers are revealed to you in the spirit realm. It's important that you learn to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Remember the language of the spirit realm are symbols. You have to use the word of the most high to help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Israelites, the first thing that happens after you pray, the most high has to either accept your prayers and sacrifice or he will reject your position. If the most high reject your prayers, you will continue to be oppressed by the Satans. Sin is the only thing that will cause the Most High to reject you and hinder your prayers. Sin separates you from the Most High. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Your sins will cause a separation between you and the Most High that He will not hear you. Israelites, we are living at a time that we need our prayers to be heard. Israelites, make sure that you're living a life that pleases the Father, that your prayers are not hindered. Some of you believe there's nothing hindering your prayers. The spirit realm will reveal everything your carnal eyes cannot see. Remember, your focus should be on the unseen. What is happening in your life behind the scenes is what matters. What you see in the physical realm is the manifestation of what took place behind the scenes. This is why you need to shift your focus to what's happening behind the scenes. For example, in the physical realm, you may appear to be a wholesome person. However, behind the scenes, your spirit is engaging in all kinds of sexual perversion in the spirit realm. Your spirit is the real you. The marine spirit cannot overpower you unless you give it permission. Can two walk together except they be agreed? When you don't break the covenant, you give the devil permission. A lot of people enjoy the sexual perversion their spirit engage in in the spirit realm. Some believe it's normal. It's not normal. You need to seek deliverance. Israelites, you must deal with the legions operating in you. Once you're delivered, you can help others find deliverance. A lot of Israelites don't know what happens behind the scenes after they pray. A lot of things takes place after you pray. If your prayers are accepted and heard, the Most High will communicate with you by giving you confirmation via a message, a person, or the spirit realm. If your prayers was accepted in the spirit realm, you will begin to see yourself victorious over the devil that oppresses you. Remember, whatever happens in the spirit realm will manifest in the physical realm. If you see yourself fighting back against the devil oppressing you, the Most High gave you victory over the devil and he answered your prayers by showing you in the spirit realm. If the spirit of poverty is what you seek deliverance from, you will see yourself in the spirit realm fighting back against the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty often masquerades itself in the spirit realm in the form of rats or roaches infesting your house. The spirit of poverty can masquerade as a thief stealing your purse or wallet. If you chase the person down and take your wallet or purse back, that is victory. If you kill the bugs in your house instead of running from it, that is victory. With the Most High showing you fighting back in the spirit realm, that is how he's communicating with you to let you know he granted you your heart desire. If you're righteous, there's no good thing will the Most High withhold from you. He will give you the desires of your heart. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Some Israelites' worldly expectations hinder their view. Some Israelites believe being delivered from the spirit of poverty is having millions of dollars in the bank. 
Israelites, there are people who have millions, even billions, and they can't spend or do what they want with the money. Sometimes you can have millions or billions and your debt increase. Having a lot of money does not cause the spirit of poverty to flee. The spirit of poverty will make you spend your millions and billions on material things until you're broke and have no inheritance to pass down to your children. We see this happening in the Israelite and indigenous black people's community right now. Generational wealth is non-existent in the black community. The scriptures gave us an example, the prodigal son requesting his inheritance from his father. He spent all of the money and became broke. When he finally realized his sin, he humbled himself and returned to his father's house after the spirit of poverty robbed him of all his money. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. The Most High's thoughts and ways are greater than ours. Let the Most High deliver us his way. Israelites, the Most High answered your prayers. The problem is that some Israelites don't like the answer to their prayers. The response did not meet their expectation. Israelites, just because the Most High's response to your prayers did not meet your expectation, it doesn't mean you weren't delivered. The Most High don't operate the way the world operates. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Israelites, after the Most High show you victory in the spirit realm, make sure to claim your victory by accepting the covenant. Your faith plays a major role in your deliverance as well as your prayers being answered. If you have low expectation in the Most High, you won't recognize when the Most High has delivered you. Israelites, it's important that you have great faith in the Most High. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. The spirit of unbelief have robbed many Israelites. The time has come for you to believe the Most High. Israelites, praying plays a key role in your deliverance. You're communicating with the Most High and making your petition known when you pray. You have to pray and fast to engage in spiritual warfare. After you pray, the Most High will begin to command His angels on your behalf. If your prayers and sacrifice are accepted, the Most High will send His angels to arrest the devil oppressing you. You will see this take place in the spirit realm. Your intercessor will fight for you after the Most High, the Father, issue the command. Israelites, your intercessor, the mediator between God and men, so many people worship, cannot do anything until the Father give him the command. Regardless if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, the Father has to say to the intercessor, so many of you know as Yahshua, but it's truly Michael, the commander of chief to the army of the Most High and the Most High's intercessor, according to the book of Enoch. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the archistratage, Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. The Most High, the Father, has to say to the intercessor, go and help her or him, deliver them from this devil. Your prince will send his angels to arrest the devil oppressing you. The spirit realm will reveal all of this to you. When you see people in a police uniform arresting a devil in the spirit realm, the dream is revealing to you victory. Your prayers was accepted and the Most High delivered you. All of this is happening behind the scenes. Israelites, the time has come for you to walk in the spirit. When you spend time in the presence of the Father, he will open your eyes to what lies behind the scenes. The spirit realm show you everything the carnal eyes cannot see. The visions you see when you sleep are not given to you for no reason. You have to find out what the Most High is saying to you. Throughout the scriptures, the Most High spoke with his people in the spirit realm. The scripture said in the book of Numbers, if there's a prophet among you, I will make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. And he said, hear now my words. 
If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. The time has come for Israelites to open their eyes and ears to listen to what the Most High is saying to you in a dream or a vision. Israelites, a lot takes place after you pray. Just because you don't see angels ascending and descending upon the earth with your carnal eyes, it doesn't mean they're not operating behind the scenes on your behalf. The Most High is commending his angels and giving them charge over you if you're righteous. Deliverance come when your ways please the Most High. Israelites, don't think nothing happens when you pray. If you're not a part of the remnant behind the scenes after you pray, the devils will place a stronger hold on your life. Israelites, make sure that you're serving the Father in the spirit and in truth. When a time of need comes, the Most High can deliver you through his angels he gave charge over you. But he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon a lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation.